Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to Season 2 of Desert Island Games. This is the Retro Bear speaking to you from the Gaming Pantry. And yes, after last year's initial uh, five episodes, uh, we decided to come back with a brand new series with some exciting guests over the next coming months or so. Quite a lot of people have uh, registered interest to come on and hopefully over the next few months I'll be talking to different YouTubers about their gaming habits, their hobbies and the games they enjoy playing. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, our first guest on season two uh, is uh, Lee, otherwise known as Nerdy Geezer. Lee, hello. Hello. Hello, thank you very much indeed for being the first person to come on for this second series. Ah, uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, really. Now that, that, that now that's really good of you, mate. I was, I was, I've asked quite a few, quite a few people to come on, and uh, um, you know, it's, it's always nice that people respond and want to do something like this, and uh, that, that's great to know. So, uh, thank you very much indeed for for giving up your time because it is a, a weeknight evening, seven o'clock. We're recording this, so. Uh, it's great to go through. Now, just to explain the concept, I've obviously had a quick chat with Lee before and about what we're going to be doing to explain to you if you've not heard this before. Uh, the whole concept of Desert Island Games is I take a YouTuber, in this case Lee, I stick him on a desert island. And I leave him with six of his favourite games. Uh, one game that he's played, on top of that, one game he's played, uh, which perhaps he wants to go back to play again or he didn't get very far with or just for some reason stopped playing it and lost interest and also because you're stuck on a desert island and yes it's nice to have nice six games that you enjoy playing uh, there's also be one game in there that you're going to hate uh, one of your least favorite games of all time so six of your favorite games one game you want to put more time into and one game that you absolutely hate and also during the, con uh, the course of the chat i was asking lee about his gaming history how he started getting into gaming and how he got to where he is today talking about various systems he owned and some experiences that he has now as i mentioned lee has got his own youtube channel and i don't want this to be uh, sort of about lee's channel i want it to be more about lee the person behind the games but obviously to give the platform to have a, a quick chat about what you do on youtube lee so if you'd like to uh, let us know what nerdy geese is all about and what sort of things you do on there and uh we'll uh, we'll pick it up from there right okay so um basically i started the channel with my youngest son he'd been badgering me for a long time to start youtube and originally it didn't <laughs> seem like such a good idea Mm. But then, of course, COVID happened and uh, we needed something to do. So all of a sudden, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea. No, um, no. that means you're, you're relatively new to doing it then. So it's COVID, we're talking, what, 18 months nearing or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, probably mm. less, actually. Now, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was, we pretty much watched everything you could watch. And so we, <laughs> we decided it was a good idea. And uh, we initially started out, it was more sort of TV, movies, and some gameplay. Mm -hmm. But then as time moved on, you know, there, obviously there weren't any new movies coming out. There weren't any, really any new TV. It was all reruns and that. So it just naturally flowed into gaming, which was something we did have quite a bit of. Not a massive yeah. amount, but... Mm -hmm. And obviously, since we started the channel, we've added to it. More to my wife's disgust. <laughs> <So, laughs> oh, um, you won't be the you'll be the only person who'll be saying that. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, all I keep getting is not more games. <laughs> oh well, we, we, I think we've all been there, haven't we? But uh, oh, it, it's it's the pitfall of the, the the gaming, the game player, and the game collector, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, to start with, I was probably more of a gamer than a collector, but. Hmm. Since doing the channel, I'll, I'd say I'm just as much a collector as a gamer now. So, if, if yeah. the balance has evened itself out, you, you yeah. find people tip the other way that, that they start out as one and then become the other. And I, I, I was as I said before, and I'm now probably way more of a collector than a gamer I, than I used to be. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it probably tipped the other way for a bit because mm. I wasn't finding the time to do YouTube and. And play all the games but i'm i'm starting to balance it out now so yeah mm. yeah and um, what's the sort of people who haven't seen your channel before what can they expect to see on there um well kind of a mix of everything when it comes to gaming um we do obviously pick up videos um we've done a few gameplay videos like complete walkthroughs and stuff uh more recently i've started doing a series called this game sucks 
And yes, fun, yeah. Yeah. funny enough, one of the games that will get mentioned tonight is in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just a bit of everything. What, whatever sort of comes our way at the time, you know. So. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a good way of doing it. I mean, everyone enjoys a good pickups video, but it's it's the ones that you do on the side that are slightly different, you know, whether it's gameplay or, as you said, you know, picking a game and which you can make a little series about or, you know, series of games. It, it just has a little bit of variety. So if you're all doing the same thing, it's it'd be really, really boring. But the more inventive and different series and ideas you can come up with and find something that sticks, then then the better, really. Yeah, yeah. I do like to do a VR video as well. <laughs> I, I've noticed you, you did quite a few. Of that I, I wish I, I wish I did more of those. I keep saying this. I wish I did more VRs, but uh, sometimes it's it's having the time to. And, and there are so many of them. Been quite a few in the last few months or so on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It's very difficult to keep up. Who's who's saying something? And do I want to respond to this? <laughs> I'd like to yeah. respond to this, but hang on, what was I doing again? You know, it's, it's it just seems a bit <laughs> like that at times. But it's yeah, good come, because it, it gets. Fast. It gets people talking as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the main reason why we enjoy doing them, because you, you feel like you're getting involved in the community then. So, mm. yeah, yeah, good. I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, as always, with, with the guests on Desert Island Games, always stick a, a description uh, link in the description below to the channel. So if you've not come across Lee before, uh, pop along and have a look. There's just some great stuff on there. You, you'll certainly find something on there if you're into gaming that you'll be interested in. Um, and like I said, if you haven't been across and seen them before, go and look at the videos. Don't forget to drop him a, a like and on the videos and subscribe as well if it's, it's your sort of thing, because I'm sure you appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's, you know, I, I know there's a lot of channels that people came onto YouTube last year because of COVID. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 and I, I've, I've seen your channel sort of grow through the sort of the 12 months or whatever it is that you've been doing it and it's, it's good to see that i mean if i'd added the number of people that you've added in the first 12 months uh, i'd have been absolutely ecstatic i really would be and a lot of people have, have added it's only people subscribing and watching the videos so in a way for creators like yourself who've come on there it's, it's probably been a very very good thing and it's been good to see as well yeah we we um basically what happened was when we started um Someone, this is going to sound confusing. I worked <laughs> with this guy's mum, and he, this guy's uh, Schmuck Pilot 79. I don't know yes. if you know of him. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, Dave, yes, yeah. Yeah, so um, he had a channel or has a channel, and um, he basically found us, and then he gave us a little bit of a push, and then it went on to Carl's Room 70, and then mm. uh, Game Zone Bird Room. And yeah. then from there, it just took off because th them three were instrumental in, you know, they mentioned us and then before we knew it, subs started going up, you know. So mm. so it, it was nice. We, we got a nice sort of welcome from the community. It was really good. I remember when Carl started, uh, and I hope he's listening, because uh, his first video, he sort of mentioned a lot of channels that he'd watched, like, you know, like a lot of people, like yourself, and you think, oh, you know, perhaps I could do that. And he mentioned some of the big hitters. Uh, 2T, for example, and mm. he mentioned me in it, and I thought, me? You know, and <laughs> I think this is going back probably, I can't remember when Carl started, might have been last year, maybe the year before, I don't know, but I, I, I wasn't really sort of got the, the following as much as I'm a big shot, the following I've got now, but there weren't so many people uh, subscribed to me or watched me back then, and so I then did sort of return the favour, I said, well, look, this guy started on YouTube, let's give him mm. a push. And yeah. everybody sort of, oh, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. And that's exactly what they did. And Carl's subs and, and views sort of went straight up from there. And uh, he was very grateful for that. And even you can push people in the right direction and, and, and know, know the channel. I mean, I didn't see your channel till a bit later on after that. I did, and I I'd, I'd certainly have shouted you out at least once before. Um, doing yeah, it. that's right. I remember you did, yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you can do that's that's why I do the, the community stuff as well. And that's why we all shout each other out because we all watch each other and, you know, you might find somebody that actually that they, 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 they don't watch. You know, you, you expect all the people who watch you to watch everybody else. But there's always you always guarantee somebody somewhere that's somebody will mention, oh, hang a second, I don't know anything about that one. And go and look at it. And then they sort of come into the fold and they know somebody else or five other people. And then before you yeah, know, you, 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 you're creating a community. That's right, yeah. 
Mm. Very, very good. Very good. Funny how it works. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. I remember the dark days of starting, in, starting on YouTube. That was a, a very long eight months to start with, but I kept going. But uh, And, and that, that's why it's good to see people start up and they get an immediate sort of push and a, a good constant recognition. And uh, yeah. that's always good to see. So, uh, well, I wish you the best of luck, mate. Hope it continues for you. And I hope this uh, pushes some people in your direction who may not be aware of your channel anyway. Uh, let's move on because uh, uh, we've got lots to get through. Uh, we always start this, Lee, with your gaming history. Uh, yeah. We've had a ch quick chat before, and Lee's given me a list of stuff, uh, which we'll go through, break off, talk about some of the games he wants to pick, keep dropping in and out. So your introduction to gaming probably is slightly different to other people's I've had on so far, in the fact that they story started directly on consoles or computers. But you started slightly differently, didn't you? Yeah, very different. Um, so... Basically, I, I grew up in a family that didn't have a lot of money. Um, in fact, at this age, I was about seven. So mm. we, we couldn't afford computers, consoles, etc. So the only time I ever actually got to play on anything like that was I had a friend that had um, an Atari 2600, which I occasionally mm. went on. But my very first introduction to gaming was actually when I was at school. Uh, we had um, like a bring a toy in day, you know, I was, I was, it was first year of junior school. Yeah, we, we had those at our school as well. Yeah, and a um, couple of lads brought in the Tommy LCD games. And I think one of them might have been called Astro Blaster, maybe. It was one where you flew across as a ship and you had like sort of blocks and you had to shoot other ships out. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember that. I, don't, I know a few. Were they, were they the Viewmasters or were they the tabletop ones? Did, well, this is a the thing. There was three people in total that brought them in. There was two tabletops. One was mm -hmm. a caveman game where you have to steal the eggs and a dinosaur. I, know, I, rem yeah. I remember that one. I certainly remember that one. I don't remember the, the Astro one. Astro Blaster one. I don't remember that one. The other one was the one that you held up, you know, the Tomitronic ones to yeah. your eyes. And... That one was uh, kind of like a you're in a tank and you've got these ships similar to the ones you see in Tron, and you've got to yes. shoot them. Yeah, yeah, you remember that oh, one? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that rings a bell. I've seen, I've seen quite a few of those. So, um, but that, that was an interesting way to start. I mean, I mean, did that sort of hook you straight on from there? Were you intrigued about you know sort of gaming? Yeah, it after did. That? It yeah. did because I mean that day I went in and I, I think I took like a Star Wars figure in because I've always been into my Star Wars. Mm. And, um, yeah, so my Star Wars figure just got put to the side and I was playing on these kids' games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, of course, when it was coming out for my eighth birthday, you know, I wanted one of these. Um, I didn't end up with one of them, though. I got like a little tiny, you know, the little pocket games you used to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it wasn't like the Game of Watch. It was one of the cheap market sort of jobbies you used to get, you know. I know. But, um, yeah. Nevertheless, you know, I loved it. it. It took little watch batteries, so when the batteries ran out, you had to wait weeks on end before you got another <laughs> couple, you know. But, yeah, um, so it was quite a while before I actually got in contact, really, with an actual system, especially of my own. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. And so alongside that, you you, you had a playing on the 2600 as well, weren't you? So Yeah, in between. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a friend of mine, well, it was more my dad's friend's kid, if you like. Uh, occasionally I'd go around there with him and then I'd end up playing on it. And it's funny, isn't it? Because you, you look back on the 2600 games and you look at them now and you think, God, they look terrible. But when you was back then, they looked great, you know? <laughs> they, they did, but I, 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 st I still think they've got uh, this this instinctive charm about them. I mean, I've, I've done a few videos recently. We've been playing a few games on there and... They might look terrible and they might sound even worse, but the playability is there. And yeah. I appreciate some of these games just continually loop around that there's no end to them, uh, not like modern games. Mm. But I, I just, I just, I just enjoy playing them because you can just pick it up and keep going. And yeah, there's just something about them. I, I, yeah, I, I, probably because I played on one when I was a kid, and we we had a system in our yeah. house, as I mentioned before. But I don't know. So I, I just 
just just love them. Just love it. I, I think the one that's fresh in my mind is Pac Man. That was terrible in the twenty six hundred, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, we had <laughs> that. Know? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> nothing like what it should have been at all. But at that, I suppose at that age, eight or nine at the time, you wouldn't really care too much about it. But when you look back and you think, Yeah, that's a shocking conversion, <laughs> it's really Yeah. Really yeah. is horrible. Really is horrible thing. Well, one thing um, I do like about the 2600, I did like the sound, and I still like the sound now. It's that old school sound, you know? You, you just can't mm. beat that. Every yeah, time that, you hear it, it sends you back, you know? That, that's it, yeah. Uh, I, there, was, there was something, that, I'm sure the game I, I played recently, I saw recently, I thought, that sounds pretty good for a 2600. Mm. I can't remember what it was now, but uh, it, they do surprise you. I, mean, I, I, I played, I, I've put a video about playing Smurf on my, my channel. And I, I couldn't back then. That game to draw me around the bend. The music was terrible and, and whatever. <laughs> but you look at that game now, and so many people who commented on the video said, "God, that look game looks brilliant for a twenty six hundred. Yeah. The colours on it, the the actual graphics, the movements. Considering what's gone into that cartridge, how tiny the memory they had. Mm. They, they, you know, they, they made a really good go of that game, and you, you are yeah. quite surprised. And they, you play something like Donkey Kong, which is <laughs> just. Rotten. <laughs> <laughs> it's really terrible. But we well, were just grateful to have them back then. So, yeah, um, true. Yeah. So, so where did you go after that then? So you, you got the 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 LCD stuff, the twenty six hundred stuff. Right. So other than that, if I wanted to play a game, I had to do it in an arcade. Um, so roughly around nine years of age, because uh, basically my mum would never take me in an arcade when I was with her. So, I, yeah, it's, it only really happened when I started being allowed to go into town on my own. And and this was back in uh, Gravesend. So mm. uh, there was an arcade called Montags. And uh, you used to get some pretty shady characters actually hanging around there. Um, <laughs> but I remember walking in there and the first game that grabbed my attention was Double Dragon. Oh, classic. classic. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Even to this day, I still love that game. It's yeah, it's it's one of my favourite games. I, I, but I played it more on the home systems, and unfortunately, the home system conversions weren't very good. I, my primary one was played it on the Amiga, so I've played it. I played the arcade version since then, but I never actually played it in the arcade. Yeah, I mean, recently I picked up a um, Pandora Nine S Plus, and um, for anyone who don't know, it's basically like a double joystick unit that's got the games built into it mm -hmm. um and that's got double dragon on it so the arcade version so oh, i've yeah, recently yeah. been playing that and yeah it's great <laughs> 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 just memories come back you know well that they do so if you've that experience in the arcade it always sort of stays with you and i've played things like outrun for the first time and um seeing afterburner and space harrier and those great Sega games from, from back then. Operation Wolf is probably the one that sort of just oh, sort of game. just hangs just just there because you can remember the arcade cabinet with the the giant Uzi mounted on the front of it and the feedback off that as well. I remember the first played it like yeah. But the the re the realism and you remember that and those experiences sort of stay with you. So uh I've played that again obviously without a light gun. Uh, on, on sort of emulation and it's not quite the same thing the, I think I've, I've mentioned to the other half I said if I want to get one arcade machine I want to get one of them yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's Operation Wolf would be the one just just to have that just for the just for the good on the front of it yeah that would look pretty good wouldn't it <laughs> oh yeah yeah that would yeah. be amazing but unlikely to happen but <laughs> there we go. You, you can dream can't you you can dream uh, so yeah I mean arcade experience well again I mean, spoke to a couple of people previously and conversations have had a lot of people first gaming impression would have been through an arcade. Um, and yeah, they, they were just different places. Even, even it was about 10 years ago, I was going to play a lot of Blackpool and you still walk into some of those places and see the games and that nostalgic feel that would just come back to you. Yeah. The only trouble I find now though, is you, you find a lot of it's been replaced with the old 2P machines. Yeah, there's a, there's a less. The, the last time I went into an arcade was probably about three, three, maybe two and a half years ago, which was down in Yarmouth, I think it was, or on the on the east coast anyway. 
Yeah. Uh, they still had some arcade machines in there, but it is you are right, absolutely. It's, it's the gambling machines and the two P things, and there was the odd arcade machine knocking around. There's always, a, always, if you walk in somewhere like that, there's always the Lost World Jurassic Park. I don't know what, <laughs> they, 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 I, I went in. I went in three different arcades that day, and there was one in each one. Uh, I don't know whether that's where they ended up retiring them to. I, I've got no idea, but I, I love that's that arcade the, game anyway. That's the cab one, isn't it, where you sit inside, yeah? Yeah, that's where you sit inside, pull yeah. the curtain around, and you can do two. So right. me, and my mate, me and my used, used to be assessed with just playing that. Every, every arcade, we, arcade we went into, uh, we would play that, and we would play House of the Dead. Badly. Oh, Badly. Badly. But, yeah, but but that's okay. what we would do, and, and I remember those. And now I just, last time I went in there, yeah, three, three different arcades, three different... Okay, cabinets are that. That's the way it is. <laughs> well, we, we, yeah, recently, we nipped into one down at Herne Bay just recently, and when we went in there, I mean, there was a couple of driving games. I mean, it was a motorbike game, a car game, and this new version of Space Invaders with a big screen. Yeah, I've, I saw uh, OG Duffy was playing that. I don't know yeah, if you know that. Yeah, he, he, he did a Herne Bay thing a couple of three weeks ago, and oh, okay. he was playing that new version of Space Invaders. That's the first time yeah, I've seen it. The only problem with it is, though, you, it doesn't seem to last very long. Um, the the wife and my youngest jumped on it, and I was mm. quite surprised. They must have only been on it about 30 seconds, and the minute the round finished, that was it. You had to put more money in. Oh, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's just that they were rubbish and they died really quickly, <laughs> or whether it was the end of the round. I don't know. <laughs> That's like a bit of a bit of a swizz, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... I bet it went, how much how much was it ago? Well you had to pay a pound each. So pound, oh, so cool. two pounds, yeah. I, I well, remember when you go to an arcade and if you had to put fifty P in you were expecting something pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well I what, mean what when I played called? when I played Double Dragon back in the day, it was like ten P a go. Yeah. <laughs> so you know ten P ten P or twenty P you were quite happy to understand, but fifty P it had to be something that you know, fifty P was four player turtles. That was that was where you were mm. on that sort of thing that scale it's got to be something like that if it's not that and you're putting 50p into it then there's something wrong well see there's a funny story about me with the arcades because the way that i afforded that was me uh because of my age because i was nine at the time my mum used to give me bus fare so that i wasn't mm. walking you know and strangers and all that sort of stuff i was with my mates but she wanted me to be safe on a bus around people you know so what i used to do was walk with my mates and then just bang it all in the arcade machines instead <laughs> 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 so that's how i paid for it <laughs> so you you won't be the only one who's done that i'm pretty sure of it so moving on from the arcade experience you then oh, I, I said this ages ago one of my favorite systems of all time commodore 64 yeah, yeah. I, I technically had two of these um two. <laughs> yeah but not at the same time if you know what I mean. Right. So, yep. but, it, but there is a funny story as to how I ended up with this system. So, um, so in a nutshell, I first came into contact with this because a friend across the road had it. And uh, I knew he was selling it. And at the time, I lied so that I could uh, do a paper round. I told him that I was 11 and I wasn't. I was <laughs> barely 10. So, <laughs> so that I could <laughs> save the money. And... Uh, you, but believe it or not, that's not the funny part of the story. The funny part of the story is that his dad was selling it really cheap, and I couldn't quite understand why because, you know, I was only 10. Mm. So um, you, you don't really think about things too much back then, do you? But no. uh, his dad had a bit of a checkered past, if you like. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the, the code word for what uh, used when he used to disappear was that he was working away, but... Of course, oh, that was right, code yeah, for yeah. in prison. Yes, <laughs> so, he's just gone on a short holiday. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> basically I bought this system and I could never understand why he sold it considering his son enjoyed playing it and why it was so cheap. And I, I think I paid, I'm, I'm thinking around £50 and I, and I got the, the old bread bin system, the disk drive, the wow. monitor, the printer and a load of disks. Yeah, it was something like that. Between fifty and eighty pound, I'm sure it was fifty though. That was and, a bargain, and, that was. Yeah, and of course at the time I couldn't understand why he sold it so cheap. So, um, well, of course one of them things come up straight away because it, it kept overheating. So, my sister's 
uh, fiance at the time thought there was a problem with the power pack. Hmm. And it turned out it was basically the fuse had been replaced with a bit of tinfoil inside. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's your overheating problem, right? So, <laughs> um, so that was fixed. And like I say, it wasn't until later on in life I suddenly realised that, you know, that item probably was stolen because mm. the main thing that his dad was put away for was burglary. So, <laughs> Oh, right, yes. Yeah, so, uh... yeah, so uh, it was basically yeah. glowing. <laughs> <laughs> so, that wasn't um, the tin I, foil. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, he didn't even pay for the fuse. So, <laughs> so um, the, re- the reason I ended up with two of these, though, was because obviously they brought out the newer shape. Mm. and uh, somebody I was at secondary school with, so it was a year or two later, he uh, he was selling his, and it's, this is the funny part. My sister's fiance said, oh, yeah, you want to get the uh, new shape? It, you know, it's much better. And, of course, it wasn't really better, was it? It was, nah. it was in a new case, really, wasn't it? But I now know why he said that, because the minute I got it, he asked me if he could have the bread bin one, and like an idiot, I let him. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so he talked me into it. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's how I ended up with two of them, but so, not at yeah. the same time, technically. So, but I mean, to have the disc drive as well. I mean, I mean regardless of where it came from, let's just not put on the uh, the legalities of where where you obtained it from <laughs> and how it was obtained. But I mean, to have a disc drive, then I mean, I I knew loads of people with Commodore sixty fours and indeed mm. Spectrums, and I didn't know one person who who had a, a, a disc based computer. In fact, my my dad's reasoning as to why we didn't have a computer, uh, a Commodore or a Spectrum or, you know, even an Amstrad. That would have been quite desperate. But <laughs> he, he said, well, discs load quicker and, and all that, so you can have a disc-based one when they become a bit more cheaper. So yeah. I could I probably could see that there was some reasoning for it, but, of course, I get far more nostalgic now for putting a tape in the Commodore 64 now put in that in and see if it works and if it doesn't work then i'll get another tape recorder out try that and keep going until it does work yeah I, I, I like that nostalgia of, of loading the game in the old way i had to explain it to to a guy very quickly before you interrupt your story mate but uh the guy i work with who's probably about uh, 30 years old and i'd picked up a load of tape games from another youtuber and somebody dropped them to me at work and i showed him that and he goes well what are they then <laughs> he, 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 he said he said well how do they work i said you don't know how this works i was like and that's all i realized hang on a second he's obviously got no idea because he would have been born in an era where that sort of stuff was outdated and he would yeah. people have been using discs and compact discs and cartridges so i can understand that but uh there's a great nostalgia to it but yeah having a disc system i mean that must have been pretty cool yeah, I mean uh, the games I had for it, they were all um, they were all copies. They they weren't original games, uh, mm. you know. Um, and it's funny because I ended up having to buy the tape deck a little bit further down the line because obviously games on tape were easier to get a hold of. So yeah. um, I mean, we only had one one main computer game store in Gravesend, and that was Software Plus, and all their C sixty four games were on tape. So. And you could get some hit squads in Woolworths as well. So oh, the, the, the elusive again, all tape. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well, you, but then again, you can go into a, a you could have gone into a news agent, and they'd have had Commodore sixty four and Spectrum and Amstrad tapes there for sale. And of course, the games were an awful lot cheaper as well. You, you, you one ninety nine, two ninety nine is a lot more affordable than than a disc because I think disc based games like fourteen ninety nine. There's no budget disc disc games there. Budget tapes, yes, but not budget discs. Yeah, uh, I mean, of course, the other thing was was that if you bought a computer magazine, the demo playable demos and some of the free games are all for set as well. So yeah, so that was the other reason, you know. So it's one of those that swings around about the, the the benefit of having the disc systems. It's slightly more enhanced, better loading time. Yeah, but the downside is that everything else comes on tape, and and the discs are way, way, way more expensive than. I think way more expensive, probably about five was it five pound or nine ninety nine cassette the Commodore sixty four. I think it was fourteen ninety nine discs, something like that. Yeah, so I mean yeah. I think probably about the time I you know, when I got my Commodore sixty four, I think the games were coming down a bit around then. Mm. Uh some of the hit squads you could pick up in uh Wars for about 
three ninety nine. I'm thinking it's two ninety nine and three ninety nine. I think their range was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then you had the kicks ones as well, didn't you? That was the other one. Kick. Oh, there's so many budget sort of. Uh, there was GBH as well, which was Gremlin. Oh yeah, uh, of course, kicks, yeah. Kick, kicks was mostly US gold. That's right. Uh, yeah, and then you had the other the other like got Code Masters, Mastertronic. Firebird, Silverbird, etc. There's so many different sorts out there. Players, oh, yeah. Firebirds, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a subject in itself, mate. That one. It is, <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, sure. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Let, let, let's then move on. Move away from your gaming history for the moment, because obviously, one of the, the, the sort of the key part of this is to get people interested in what your favourite games are. Uh, yeah. You're giving me six on this list. Um, if I could start with your second one first of all, because I think it's quite appropriate about what we're talking about now. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then we'll go back to your first one because that'll lead lot yeah. lead nicely into the second game. So, um, so yeah. your first game, so your fake one of your favourite games off your six your six list. Your first choice is Bubble Bubble on the C sixty four. Ah, love that game. Yeah, love that game. Do, do you know what? For me, it's the sound more than anything. Mm. There are good versions of it on every system, but you can't beat the sound on the C64. When I hear that sound, I get goosebumps. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. The, 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 what I like about it so much is actually the um, title screen music. I think that's yes. a re- really, really, really good version of that. Because I, I got my friend had it on the Commodore 64, and I got it on the Amiga. When it came out, oh. on, I think it's hit, hit squad budget, <laughs> ironically, of all things. And <laughs> it was, I, I was not impressed with the Amiga version. I much prefer the Commodore 64 version. Not just hearing that piece of music, but I think everything about the 64 version was far, far better. Yeah. Uh, and we and we used to play that more as a two-player game than we did the Amiga version. Because I had the Amiga at the time, we had the Commodore 64. So we spent more time playing Commodore 64, bubble bobble, than we did on the Amiga. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I have access to um, the arcade version, but I actually prefer playing the Commodore 64 version because I've got it on my uh, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually prefer the C64 version, and it's because of the sounds, the music, you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it, strange. It's a, it's, it's a cracking little game anyway, but one, one of the great things about conversions of arcade games in those days was occasionally... You had a and Bubble Bobble is regarded as, as probably one of the better best conversions of an arcade game on the Commodore sixty four. In yeah, fact, definitely. I think there there aren't many bad. I know there's a couple of maybe a couple of iffy versions of it, but not many. And as you as you quite rightly said, some people do prefer playing that version the, the original arcade. And it's 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 quite surprising how often people do say that. Oh, yeah, play it in the arcade, play it on the home system. But I much prefer playing it on the home system. It's just more playable, or it's more fun. And you find that with with average arcade games, which then become really good home system conversions. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think it's true in that case. Because I mean, I've I've also tried it on other systems. I mean, like the the NES ones, not bad. Um, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with the game, but it, it's more the, the music and the sound. It just doesn't sound the same, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing how much difference that can make. So, yeah. Did you play it's it more the... two-player or one-player? Uh, well, I mean, when I had that on originally on the C64, I mean, my brother used to play, but the problem was my brother was a bit of a sore loser. You know, when he when he lost, he'd start banging his hands on the keys, you know, and and then there'd be a punch up in the front room, you know. So, so I, I'd probably say I played it more on my own because of that fact. But yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Because uh, it is again one of those games which is probably best appreciated with two of you. Uh, yeah, but then it, well, then again, sorry, go on. you you certainly get further into it with two of you. Hmm. It's one of them ones a bit like the old Streets of Rage and games like that. If you're if you're on your own, you're not getting very far. <laughs> so, mm, yes, yeah. Because yeah. it says, you know, some of those games are better played as, as two, and then if you try and play them as one. I mean, I, I've always said about when we, we used to go and play Golden on the N64 that everybody used to sort of crowd around and play the four player. Yeah, because that's what that's what you did. 
I, I, because I wasn't very good at it, I didn't particularly enjoy it. But when I actually got my own copy of Gold Nine years later, I actually really wanted to play the single player game, and yeah. I really enjoy playing that. And I'll, 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 did I finish it? I think I finished it. So maybe one of the very last games I've ever actually finished. But I was dedicated. I was coming home from work, playing it, and yeah, occasionally I had to sort of dip onto the internet to find out what I was meant to be doing. But for me, it was, it was a better one-player experience than that. And I think I've always played Bubble Bubble as a two-player game. Yeah, you don't get very yeah. far as one player. You can get get certain points, but yeah, I think it's one of those which is better as two. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm. if you want to get further into it, and I mean, this is the thing. There's so many levels to it. I mean. Has anyone ever completed it? <laughs> I dare say somebody has. I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody somewhere has done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But but again, with the 64 version, I crammed so much into it because of the limitations I had with the, the memory and, and, and with the other conversions as well. Some of the levels had to be missed out or left out. And I think they got... It's not a complete conversion, but a pretty damn near complete version of it. Is it 100 yeah. levels, I think? Is it 100? I, I I think it might be, you know. I'm sure mm. I've heard that it's a hundred. I mean, I've never got close to that, but <laughs> no, me neither. No, no. I dream of dream of reaching, you know, sort of halfway. That'd be nice, but <laughs> yeah. I think I just, you know, ten screens. I mean, I, 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 mind you, I, I think that there's there is there is evidence of me playing that on on YouTube as well. I think I played the I played the Master System version. I think for a high score challenge. Oh, okay. I, well, I, I, I think I did. I don't. Must have done. I, I'm sure I did. I think I played the C64 version on on YouTube. I think I have hmm. because I, I played it on my Raspberry Pi. So that, that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of people said to me, "Ah, oh, why didn't you get the C64 Mini?" But hmm. I, I, well, there's no point. I've got a Raspberry Pi, and that's basically what's in it. So it's you exactly know, exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've was, got I've got I've got one purely for nostalgia. Cause I've, I've got I've got two normal size ones anyway but because it was such a good price i thought well, i'll just i'll just buy it i haven't opened it yet still in the wrapper it came in but um, i've heard the joystick's terrible yeah yeah i've, yeah. I've heard that as well I, I think it's the same one they used to the, the the plug and play which came out a few years ago which had about 30 games built into it and All i picked right. up a car, car boot years ago and that's a terrible joystick as well yeah really i've, I've heard it hurts your hand with trying to use it you know mm. so yeah um not overly keen to get it, open it up and play on it because, like you said, you know you've got the other other ways of doing it, and I've got the original way of doing it as well. So I'll, I'll yeah. keep to that. Just one of those things yeah. I like to have knocking around. Mm. So from two player eight bit action, we then jump to your second favourite game, which is uh, leaping yeah. into the leaping into the next generation. Uh, and it, uh, again, a game that I know quite a few people really appreciate. A game, to be honest with you, I don't really got on with. But this isn't about me; it's about you. So, um, it's it's a difficult game. It, it can be quite I, challenging. I, last time I played it, I think it was on the Evercade. And, yes, um, I I didn't enjoy that in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not saying it's the Evercade's fault. You know, I don't want to get this and develop into an Evercade because I know you've got an Evercade as well. And yeah, yeah. Really, I don't want to get in the the whys and warehouses of that. But yeah, it, it, that was the last time I played it and I really couldn't get on with it. So I, I, I haven't been back to it since. Um, so you, your, your number two game then? Earthworm Jim. On the Mega Drive? Yeah, on the Mega Drive, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was a game, uh, the minute it came out, I, I don't know what it was. I think it was because it's quite a zany game, isn't it? Like, you know. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah, completely bonkers. Completely. Yeah. You know, like where you hit a fridge and then a cow goes up in the air, and <laughs> you know, and he, and when you leave him standing still, he pulls his body out of his spacesuit and skips like, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I think it was, it was pretty much that sort of thing. And of course, around that time, you had a lot of the uh, cartoons, you know, like the Nickelodeon style um, cartoons, you know, like Ren and Stimpy, that sort of thing. And I was kind of drawn yeah. to that sort of stuff at the time, anyway. So when it came out, I was like, oh, this, this looks good. And, you know, and I got hold of it. And, yeah, it, it, I mean, like I say, it is challenging. It is a hard game. And, in fact, I actually find it harder now than I did when I was younger. Now, that's, it, that's because we're older, mate. That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Your yeah, reaction yeah. time's slow, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. We, we, we but, tried um, to deny it, but, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, I, I, definitely. I, I definitely am challenged more playing it now. But mm. I keep going back to it because it's the nostalgia thing. Yeah. Uh, and also because of the fact that I now find it harder. I mean, that would be perfect on a desert island because I'd probably never get to finish it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's, it's the perfect choice, as we, as we said before we started. You know, it's, it's, it's the sort of game that that will be ideal for that. I mean, it, it, looks, it, it looks really, really good. And the sound... I mean, it's the sound effects and the music yeah. and uh, and the, the humour in it as well. It's, I think it was, I'd like to say it was a lot more different than a, most our uh, platform games at the time. Even though, he, was it before, I think it was after Sonic, wasn't it? Am I right saying yes. that? It was after Sonic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was. I, I mean, Sonic is a, is a cartoony platform game, but it, it's, a, it's a little bit serious. It's not, you don't have the, the humour that Earthworm Jim has. And there's a lot going for the game. I mean, like I say, I don't like it, but I'm not saying it's a bad game. There's a lot going for it. I think it appeals more to an older audience, don't it? I mean, I think they realised as the longer the Mega Drive was out, the kids that had grown up with it were now getting older. So yeah. you had to then bring out things that would interest them as teenagers. And so I think Earthworm Jim slotted in there nicely because... You, you know, it, kids could still play it, but it also had that sort of teenage stupidness to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah, appealed yeah, to I, everybody. I agree. And because it, it, it was on the Mega Drive Mini as well, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. I, I never I actually ended up getting one of them. It, it could be. I mean, it seems to be coming out on everything, don't it? So. Yeah, because I, I think the Mega Drive Mini was the first. I was When that came out, I was quite surprised to see a number of the games that were on there. That's one of the reasons I got it, and I got in just before the prices started to go up again. Yeah, um, just very, very lucky to get that. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the games, and I thought, wow, they put Earthwind Jim on there. That's good. And yeah, some of the other not... ones, and and of course, it crops up on the Evercade as well. Yeah, yeah, and of course, on the Evercade, you then got the second one as well, which yeah. was even more of a bonus because you know that that kind of just added to it. So, hmm. I yeah. think I've got the uh, there was a Game Boy game as well. I think I've got somewhere. Whether it was a, uh, it may just be, it might be the original Game Boy. Uh, uh, I think Colour. you might be right. Yeah, I think you might. I'm be something. Right. It might be Game Boy Color, but uh, no, I think it was original Game Boy. I do remember That's, a grey cartridge. So I think you're right. Yeah. It's a strange game that one. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't like that one. Either. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah, not, not all things. things. Yeah. Not all things converted brilliantly to the Game Boy. <laughs> no, that's, that's very true. And, and Earthwind Jim, of course, had its own cartoon series as well, so it was very, very yeah. successful. Uh, yeah. and, and people like yourself do have fond memories of it. I know I know, Nath Retro won a very big fan of Earthwind Jim as well. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's, you know, other than the fact that it's completely mad, mm. um, like I say, you know, it's still challenging. And in fact, I've, like I said, I find it more challenging now than I did then. So it, it's one of them games I keep going back to because I would like to finish it. So, yeah. And of course, these older games were harder to complete anyway, weren't they? So, oh, God. oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's it. I mean, people nowadays playing something like that who'd never played a game of that era would sort of really struggle with it. My I'm, boys I'm do. Young, yeah. Yeah, whenever and, uh, they play them, they say they're harder. And and that, to me, shows how well games hold up. If, yeah. if the, the newer generation of, you know, say your kids, but also, um, you know, teenagers, then moving into sort of young adults, are playing the old games that we played. Yeah. Uh, and they're finding them difficult to play. Then we, we, we know that, actually, we didn't do too badly back then, did we? No, I mean, this is the thing. I think now with the new games, they make them the way they do because they want the kids to hurry up and finish it and go out and buy another one of their titles, don't they? Yeah. Whereas back then, they didn't think like that so much. No. Um, I'm not saying software was perfect back then because some of those games, even for, for us back then, were brutally hard. Brutal, yeah. some of them. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, if you ask you when you're allowed to play Jet Set Willie or something now, it are reducing the tears, mate. Oh yeah, they wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, <laughs> no idea, no idea whatsoever. Um, yeah, and, and that was a difficult game when 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 we were younger. Those, yeah. those sort of eras. So that, that's two off your list, and so you know, varied choice. Let's go back to your gaming history because, as we said, that sort of leads nicely into where you went to, to next. So after the C sixty four, 
And then this is quite an interesting one because you, you sort of gave me the classification. It's not just this particular console. It's actually an imported version of it, which is really interesting. I, I really want to know how you ended up with one of those. Right. So um, I'll, I'll say what it is first. It was a, a Japanese Mega Drive. Um, wow. The, yeah, that, that yeah. is amazing. In fact, uh, I mean, I was quite surprised because, um, you know, there weren't many of these around at the time. They weren't. And, uh, uh, I didn't know anybody with an important Mega Drive at all, ever. <laughs> I, there was, uh, I remember there was, I will say about five, ten minutes walk from me, there was a parade of shops and there was a, a store that used to, it was kind of like, it, it had like home consoles and you went in, you paid a certain amount and you could go in there and play them. And that was the only place I knew that had a Japanese Mega Drive uh, until a friend at school asked if anyone wanted to buy one. And I heard this and I was like, oh, I'll have it. You know, <laughs> um, I forget how much I paid for it. But again, I was doing a morning paper round, so I had some money tucked aside. And um, I remember when I got it off him, I got it with um, a Spider-Man game. I, th I think it was the Amazing Spider-Man, maybe. I think that's what it yeah. was. There was a, there was there was a thing called Spider Man. Yes, that's probably right. Yeah, and uh, I also got RoboCod with it. Yeah, that like, that came out in every single living system ever. That one. Yeah, a lot of people like that game. I didn't like it. I couldn't. Stand I don't it. like it either. <laughs> I uh, don't like it. It's funny. Like I, I'm, I'm a bit weird compared to some people. You, I hear people go, "Oh, that's a great game." And I'm sitting there thinking, "I thought that was rubbish." But yeah. you know, so. <laughs> I know. I'm exactly the same. And then you know, I say the same thing to people, and they think exactly the same about me as well. I can talk yeah. with that pile of wee, wee games behind me, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> each to their own, isn't it? You know, that's it. That's I, it. I like I like the Wii too. So you're not the only one. A lot but, of people, um, just, just not, not not many people are prepared to admit it like you and I do. So. Oh, I don't care, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I am what you see. That's it. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the other game I got with it was a, and I believe this only came out in Japan. Uh, it was a shoot map called Whip Rush. Um, now, it's I've, I've played it on the channel recently, actually, because I've, I've got it on my EverDrive, uh, and it's. It was a game that all my mates wanted. And, of course, none of them could get it because they all had the PAL version. So, mm. you know, they all looked around for it. And, I, and then they would come back to me and say to me, I'm, I'm sure it's just Japanese. I can't find this game anywhere, you know. So that's why I say I'm pretty certain it was just a Japanese game. But it had very good sound, very good colours. Um, the music on it is brilliant. Mm. Uh, even to this day, I still love the music on it. But, uh, of course, now, if you play it, though, you... you I mean, I, I play it on an EverDrive, so it seems slower. Of course, back then, it, it didn't, because I was running mm. it on a Japanese system. So, yes, yeah, it's very different. <laughs> so, Faster running uh, running speed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, obviously, you had the 60 hertz, didn't you? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, do you know what? I've got a... I mean, I'll, I'll say it now. I've got a... A bit of a weird thing with Mega Drive because you'll hear this crop up quite a bit in this. <laughs> I, I never seem to quite learn my lesson when it comes to the Mega Drive. <laughs> so, but we'll get to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just amazed. I mean, like I said, I knew nobody at all with, with one of those. In fact, the only person I knew who had anything resembling that was somebody who actually decided to take a file to their cartridge oh. slot and, and widen it so you can get the, the, the import cartridges in. And that was somebody at school, and he told my mate who moved from a Master System to Mega Drive. He said, and my mate said, oh, I don't fancy doing that. I said, well, don't do it then, you know. And yeah. Of course, eventually I, they, they I brought out people, the... Sorry, I, I knew yeah, people yeah. who did that as well, filed them down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Crazy. of course. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, the risk it, I, I mean, I suppose really because you're widening the slot, it's not really going to make a massive amount of difference if you go do too much or whatever. If it's if you're trying to make something shorter to fit, then probably mm. I'm guessing you're in danger of sort of going beyond the, the realms of being usable. But of course, yeah. they, they brought out adapters for it and what have you, and another thing you can stick on top of the Mega Drive and make it as tall as possible with everything else you've added onto it. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that 32 eggs, blimey. What was they thinking about that? <laughs> oh, no. I, I've got a master system converter, um, and that is bad enough. 
I mean, that's yeah. a giant piece of plastic. Yeah, yeah. It really is. And uh, thank, thank God for the EverDrive, right? <laughs> well, that, that, well, that's it. Emulation, EverDrive, all those sorts of things, and mm. uh, even these sort of like knockoff undels that came out and these app games mega drives and the mega drive mini and you know you've got all that now yeah uh, but yeah I, I never knew anybody with it with an import one um so so from from going japanese you then moved sort of back to european based consoles with your next one yeah so um i then moved over to the snes mm. um now, the reason I moved to the SNES was because of Street Fighter 2. And I'm sure quite a few people could understand that because mm. it was rubbish, wasn't it? I didn't make a drive. So, <laughs> yeah, the Championship Edition was not great, was it? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got that as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not a Street Fighter 2 fan either. So, it's, it's, it's a game I own. I'll go about as far as that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the thing was, I mean... When I first got the Championship Edition, because I, I loved the game in the arcade, um, obviously, if I remember right, they didn't have the six-button Mega Drive pads out straight away. They, you had to use the three, mm. and you had to push start to switch between the punch and the kicks, which was it's always, hopeless. It's too complicated for me. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I mean, it kind of was, because by the time you push start, you'd already been hit about three or four times, you know, so it was just a... <laughs> a, a pointless way of playing it, you know. And and when you got the six button pads, it wasn't much better. <laughs> so, I mean, it just it just seemed slow. It looked quite ugly. So I moved over to the SNES, and it was pretty much because of that game, that and uh, Mario Kart. Hmm. So, and and there was another game as well, Top Gear, which is now out on the Evercade called Top Racer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was another game. So, then three games, but more Street Fighter 2 than any other was what led me over to the SNES. But, um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't say I disliked the SNES, but I, I found it was harder to find games I liked on it than what I found mm. on the Mega Drive. So, so, I didn't really keep hold of it very long, but I did have it for a while. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I... I, I like both. I, I, I favour the Mega Drive mm. because I, I had one of those. That was my my first proper console I had, which I bought yeah. off a guy at college. So, but I played an awful lot of SNES games as well because my mates had SNES consoles each, and we spend most nights around one of the out when they when they're out is playing Street Fighter Two, uh, Mario Kart, Super yeah. Star Wars. Oh, that uh, was another one. Yeah, yeah, that rock hard game. That those those three yeah. games was absolute nightmare. To, great, I mean, great games to look at at the time. And I still think they're they're pretty good now, but oh, a horrendous difficulty level. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I like the SNES. I, I was looking to get one, enough to get one years ago, and when they were dirt cheap and nobody wanted them, uh, and I still buy bits and pieces for it now, and and I've got you know nice little loose cartridge collection. I'm very happy with. Uh, and see, I, 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 I like it. See, the funny thing is, is that I have more of an appreciation for the SNES now than I did back then. Mm. And I think it was probably because I didn't know many people who had them. And so a lot of games I didn't come ar- over at the time, I, you know, I didn't realise were a thing. It was mm. only like years later when other people I knew had got them, I started finding, you know, like F-Zero, Killer Instinct, you know. Yeah. And, and of course, these are games I, I enjoy. But at the time, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't too aware of the library because obviously I had the Mega Drive. I was more aware of those games. So, and I think that's probably I probably got rid of it sooner than I really should have. So, mm. yeah, I wasn't really aware of the library as well as I am now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think it's you know it's a really good system. Uh, mm. Some of the games have aged a little. You try playing the uh, Star Fox. Star Wars, oh. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try playing yeah. that now. It's, but I, I like that game. I, I, I like Lila Wars and the N64. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But yes, you know, Rock and Roll Racing, I think, is another one that suffers really, really badly from the polygon graphics. And um, But you're going to yeah. find that get games age, don't they? So Yeah, early doors. I mean, you could say the same about the PlayStation, and that was newer, you know? Mm. 
Yeah. Go back and but, look at them now, you know. Oh well, yeah. I mean that that era, PlayStation, Saturn, N sixty four. There is a a lot of really sort of naff looking games there. The one that really sort of opened my eyes in a sense was the uh, Pilot Wings, because it was such a yeah. different game. You know, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea because the concept of sort of going through a, a training, flying training school and parachuting and all that. Not going to appeal to everybody, but I thought this is a really different game. And again, because I didn't have one at the time, I thought, yeah, if I have a SNES, I'd really like a copy of Pilot Wings and I'd happily sit down and play it properly. Yeah. Because uh, I think my friend my friend bought it because he'd, he'd read about it in a magazine, so it was really good. And he went to one of the local independent game shops, come back with it, played it for a few days, and then went and changed it with something else. See, so again, I, I never even, at the time when I had my SNES, I'd never even heard of that game. Mm. Which which I should probably be a bit ashamed about because you know people are probably going call yourself gamer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I was definitely more of a Sega lad. I think that's probably why mm. I didn't keep the snares long. You know, I so, think. Uh, well, you, you were in, you were in one camp or the other, weren't you? Before that, it was mm-hmm. you know, the ST and the Amiga. Before that, it was a Commodore sixty four, the Spectrum, Kate and the Amstrad. If anybody you know everybody owned Amstrad, but you, you were always in one camp or the other. But even now. It's like you're yeah. on PlayStation for PlayStation or, or Xbox. Um, I, I'm kind of between. <laughs> I can't mm. be honest, but I think they both I, I th- have their merits. I think you have to be to appreciate the merits and, and the, the pitfalls of both systems. Yeah. You, you have to sort of, you know, a lot of people will rush out and buy the the brand new console simply because it's it's got the badge on it. It's PlayStation, it's a new Xbox or you know, whatever. But I, th- I think you have to sort of, sitting between the two. I, I was always, I've been proved wrong a number of times over the years. I sort of sat in one camp and then actually after sort of spending a bit of time researching it or looking at it or playing on something, actually thinking, hang on a second, I've sort of now me flagged the wrong one here. Actually, that one's far, far better for me. Mm. Um, it's like the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox. I had the PlayStation 3, but before we got the PlayStation 3, I wanted the Xbox 360. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. Reason, the, reason, the reason we got the PlayStation 3 was because we could run the home media network through it and it got a Blu-ray player on it. And at that, at that point, everybody had basically shoved off HD DVD and they'd all, all the major studios had back Blu-ray. Yeah. So you get, you get, you get a console with a free Blu-ray player in it. You know, it's, See, it's the, a no brainer. When you get to that part in gaming history, you'll find that my, my choice was a little bit different to yours, but we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be interesting, and that's fantastic. <laughs> so, from the SNES, and I, I don't think we've talked about this system on on this on the three, previous sort of five episodes I've done of this. And again, I'm I'm really interested because again, I only knew one person with this particular system, um, and he used to enjoy it. So this is it's the PAL Mega Drive Stroke Mega CD. Oh, so yeah. When I got rid of my SNES, I got rid of it because uh, a friend of mine was selling his Mega Drive and his Mega CD, and so that's how I come about that. So yeah, um, of course that. And again, I pretty much kind of bought this for one game, hmm. and that was Final Fight because on that you had the full version. You could play as Guy as well. Yeah, because those versions were missing people, weren't they? That's right, yeah. And on that version, you could play as all the characters. So so it was kind of just because of one game. But obviously, my friend had others. Um, there was a shoot 'em up called, oh, what was it? Was it Soldis or something like that? It had a weird S- name to it. Silfeed? That might be it, yeah. yeah. My, so friend, my friend had that one. That's, it. that's the only one I know about. That's, I know he had that one. Yeah, and then, and then of course you had the uh, the Mega Games disc as well, didn't you? So it had Golden mm-hmm. X and all that on it. The classics. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, do you know what I'm thinking? I can't remember what else I had on it. There were <laughs> others. Mm. But um, yeah, because a lot a lot of the games were double disc as well, weren't they? It was like a double case. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I can't for the life of me remember what other games I had on it. There <laughs> were a few others. There was, there was a oh. helicopter one. Thunderhawk. Might have been that. Yeah. Was, that, sounds... that, that was that was one I remember. Yeah. It was either that or was there one called Cobra something? Cobra Command? 
that might be it. Yeah, that might be it. I could be putting random words together there, but they sound like they should go together. Yeah, I I definitely had a helicopter game on it, and that does sound familiar, so, yeah. Mm. So what attracted you to to, to go with that option? Because um, given the technology at the time, I know know it it was being sort of sold as this is where the the next generation is going to go in terms of gaming, because you've got the, the full motion video, you've got the CD storage capability, the more stuff you can put on there, better graphics, CD quality sound. So what was your reasoning behind getting one? Well, I mean, like I say, I mean, the the thing was the the lad I bought it off, he was a few years older than me, and mm. he was one of these guys that was spoiled rotten growing up. So whenever he had something, we all wanted it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like kids do, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I imagine that's probably one of the reasons why I wanted it, because he had one, mm. um, and it was him that was selling it. But the other reason, like I say, it was because, you know, Final Fight, you know, I wanted to be able to play the proper version of it like you had in the arcade. So mm. so that was another thing that drew me to it. Um, and, of course, he had, you know, like I say, he had a few games for it. So it just, it was a good buy. He was selling it for a good price. And and I wanted a Mega Drive again because I, I missed my uh, original Mega Drive. So it just mm. made sense to buy it, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that, 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 that's 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 a good reason enough behind it. Like I, said, I, I didn't know anybody anybody with one, uh, but you, you see, you sort of look at it, wow, that, that looks really really good, and mm. it just just wasn't quite the right time for it. No, uh, no, which is which is a bit of a shame, really, because I was that's say say it ever really recovered from it properly. I, I'm not quite entirely sure that's hundred percent true, but. It sort of started a bit of a, a period where you started to sort of get a bit concerned about the stuff they were doing. If you think what happened afterwards, you then had the thirty two X and then you had the the Saturn and then the Dreamcast yeah. and that was that was that that was them finished by then. Yeah, you know, it was it was a start of bad decisions, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh yeah. but they probably want to be first to market because I, I I'm pretty sure Nintendo were developing a similar thing. Uh or were looking at C D based technology. To, to go with the snares. Yeah, if, if I remember right, there was um, there was something like that in development, or was it in Japan? Was it Japan? I think you're probably right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it might have been for the fam- Super Famicom. I'm sure it was. Yeah, there, and, and that, there, was, there was also some talk at one stage. Was it Nintendo that was going to go in with... PlayStation, maybe, at one stage? Yeah, Nint- Nintendo were going to go in with Sony. Uh, yeah. And then they decided to go their own separate ways, and that's yeah. when we got the N sixty four and the PlayStation one. Yeah, that's well, right. I, I think yeah. that they were talking about this long, you know, sort of good few years before that happened. We're probably talking uh, ninety two, ninety three for the Mega CD. Uh, PlayStation was ninety five, N sixty four was ninety six. So. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one, uh, but a system I, I've I've always wanted. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if I was, there aren't many now. More many that I want, and and that's certainly one of the one of the two or three that I'm missing. But they are expensive to pick up. Oh yeah, I, I, oh. Mean, I can't tell you how much I regret getting rid of that, and not just because of how much it's worth, mm. but because I know I'll never own one again. Yeah, you know. I'm not paying oh. them prices. <laughs> They're horrendously expensive, and, and even if you if you try and buy a broken one, you you are still talking around about a ton for them, which is yeah, uh, it's quite. That's just unboxed, possibly the not working condition. If you're and talking, probably in a hell of a state too. Yeah, yeah. And if you, if you're talking boxed and working, then you may want to add another hundred on top of that, possibly get close to it anyway. Absolutely, yeah. and you don't see them all that often as well. No, no. I, I mean, you know, out of all the people I know that even have old systems, none of them have got a Mega CD. So no. yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by that at all. And and I've I've never sort of had the opportunity to buy one at, uh, availability. I've seen them, but I've never sort of had that opportunity to say, yeah, I'm definitely going to get that. Just yeah. haven't been able to just justify spending that amount on it just for it to sit in the box like it usually does. I mean, of course, this is the other thing, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, although they did 
bring some stuff out on it. They didn't really support it too well, I don't think. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. I think that the, the, the software line up with it. There aren't many games that I would sort of look at that library now and say, yeah, I, I really want to play that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or that's an essential. You, you may get a handful. Probably the rest are going to be games which probably aren't that good. And, and also, a, a good amount are also ones that come out in cartridge originally anyway. Yeah. So, you know, like Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, you know, they were already out on cartridge anyway. So, mm. yeah, that was, I think, yeah. the other mistake they made with that. It's it, it's an interesting, it's one of those systems that's going to sit there alongside, you know, the Virtual Boy and the, the Wii U. There's just sort of, not quite sure what you were thinking there or yeah, I think one of really they, they just wanted to go look we've built something that takes a CD mm. this looks cool buy it you know I think that's all it really was I don't think there was any more fault other than that that went behind it <laughs> you know yeah, who, no, who could bring I, a CD based system out first yeah well, I, I, I agree it, it's, it's, it's sort of look at what we can do and yeah but then look what happened you know within sort of the next 10 years that they were yeah. a non-entity. So yeah, I've always thought of it as more of a vanity project. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think you, you're probably right. So before we go back to your, your games, I just want to get these next two systems in because they're quite close to my heart, but also the fact as well, we, we're sort of drawing a line on that era. And then yeah. when we go back to your game history, we'll be sort of moving into another area. Uh, and again, you told me about this before, and then I was like, "Wow, fantastic uh, yeah. system! System I know and love." Yeah, uh, and that is the Amiga Five Hundred Plus. And I might as well mention that I also ended up with an Amiga Twelve Hundred not long afterwards. Ooh, um, Amiga Twelve Hundred. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've I done a video recently. Uh, it was a VR to someone about gaming regrets, and other than the Mega CD, these two were also systems I mentioned because, man, I I really wish I hadn't got rid of them. <laughs> I really... You know, I even said in a video that I hate myself every time I think about it. <laughs> you know? I, I, so, I, I, I am the same with my 500 because my 500 and its collection of games went to the skip. Yeah, yeah. The only, thing criminal, I've ever, <laughs> only thing I've ever thrown away, and to be honest with you, Lee, I've got to be honest, that was probably about four years before I started collecting that was yeah. probably about 2005 so my dad said i still got that amiga here he says do you want it or not i said no no one will want that <sighs> oh no <laughs> like ashes, ashes in my mouth every time i say that you know what i mean <laughs> so you're, you're pretty similar to me really aren't you on that yeah every time you think of it it's like oh <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, I said before I'm not, i tend to keep hold of everything now yeah and i'm not sure whether it's because of that it's not because of that but it may be because of that i don't know the, the thing is, I, I mean, I've got so many great memories of that system. I mean, I, you know, I had a lot with my C64, but uh, the Amiga 500 Plus, I should probably explain. I mean, my uh, uncle gave it to me. And as a result, I played it a lot with my uncle. And a lot of the games I had on it were bought for me for birthday presents and things like that. And, I mean, we're talking some fantastic games as well. Mm. Um you know, Cannon Fodder 1 and 2, mm. um, Lemmings. Yeah. Beneath a Still Sky. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's some, there's some classics there, mate, yeah. Yeah. Syndicate, that was another one. I really enjoyed playing that. Flashback. Yeah, uh, yep, yep. Yeah. And, of course, the other thing was the music as well, because some of these games that I had for the Amiga, I'd previously had or had on the Mega Drive. Mm. But they sounded better on the Amiga. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I had the 500 plus, and then not long afterwards, I ended up with the 1200, which was wasn't planned. But mm. basically, my uncle uh, met somebody in America, and he went out there a couple of times. And then he, you know, next thing we heard, he was getting married, and he was moving out there. So I remember mm. him coming down, and he said. Let's start packing the 500 aside. And I said, why is that? He said, because you're having this. Oh. You know, he said, I can't wow. take it with me. So here you go. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. 
and and I remember just looking at him, thinking like, "What for nothing?" Like <laughs> you know. <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, oh, I, I, I mean, the, the funny thing was though, right? Although I had the twelve hundred, I don't remember buying any games that were specifically twelve hundred for the system. Mm. I think I still pretty much played 500 games on it, you know, like Zool and yeah. oh, Zool, Zool 2 weren't so great. That's not a good example. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm not aware of any 1,200 specific titles. For it. I mean, I, I had a 500 and that, I, got, I expanded that with the, the memory upgrade underneath to make it a one meg. Yeah. No, I didn't get my I didn't get my twelve hundred till years later, and that was given to me as well. Oh, that was yeah. given to me. It was uh, postage. A friend of Mrs. Bear said, "Oh, you can have this just for the cost of postage." So we we had it, and I've not used it much, to be honest with you. I will, I will be honest, yeah. but um, they 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 ain't cheap now twelve hundred. But uh, I, I I I you know I was quite happy with the five hundred, and then the five hundred plus came out, and then the six hundred came out, and everybody I knew sort of get started getting six hundreds. Yeah, yeah, and then I did about the three, the, the Amiga three thousand, but I wasn't really interested. In I, I couldn't really. I thought, well, that, those are sort of high end spec. I'm never going to own one of those anyway. Look how much they cost. I'm yeah. Just happy with the five hundred. Well, did, did what the, I wanted to do. So the the thing with the five hundred was was I already had some uh, nostalgia for it before I ended up with it because when I had my C sixty four, my spoilt friend up the road that I mentioned earlier. He actually had the Amiga when I had the C64. So I'd played a lot of games on his system, like Golden X, uh, IK Plus, yeah, you know, games like that. So, of course, when my uncle came down and gave you one, it was like, whoa, like, you know, because I had all these memories of it. It's funny because most people had, Mega Dr- uh, had Amigas probably before Mega Drives, but I had it the other way around. So yeah, I th- I th- yeah, I, I, I had my Mega Drive, my Amiga before I knew people had Mega Drives at school. Yeah, but I did it the other way around. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, you know, when someone comes down, you, you know, your uncle comes down and goes, "Here, I have this." You're yeah. not going to sit there and go, "What do I want that for?" Like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what what's yeah. that? Oh, no, it won't fit my desk. Yeah. I don't want it. I, I think it for me, yeah. it's, it's always been more about the enjoyment of the system hmm. than than how good or how bad it is. You know, like if, if somebody come up to me with an old system, but it's an old system that I enjoyed, I would never hmm. say, "No, I don't want that." <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's oh, always yeah. been like that. No, I, I would never turn anything down like that. I mean, even if I. I would say even if I wasn't a fan of it, it's it's very rarely that's the, the, the case that people have offered me stuff that I would sort of say no, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, or I wouldn't be interested in that. But there's systems I've got which I didn't think I would get hold of, which I now really enjoy. Um yeah. Like the DS, I, I wouldn't have thought about getting a DS, but I, I got sent one last year. I think it was Danger sent me one last year. And I, I love it. It's, it's, it's a great little system. And I thought, I'm, only, I'm not going to yeah. not go down the rabbit hole of collecting for the DS, but I would never have thought of getting one. I really like it. And I was the other one that, that sort of cropped up as well. Um, I think it was the NES as well. I've had the NES years. And now I've I've never been a big fan of it, but now I've started picking up a few more cartridges. I'm getting, well, actually, it's not so bad. I didn't really like this all that time ago. And I got one, found one cheap, and I thought, well, I love it. Um, yeah, well, probably yeah. never going to play. I, I mean, I, I, for years I had six cartridges for it. I bought my NES back in about 2010, and for years I had six cartridges, and those came with it when I bought it. And yeah. I think the last 12 months or so, 15 months, I probably added another 10, 12 games to it. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's like, uh, for example, the Game Boy. Now, you will laugh at this, right? Probably. I only got a Game Boy about, well, I think, what are we in now, July? So I probably only got it about nine, ten months ago, and that's the first mm. Game Boy I've ever owned. Good grief. It's, it's, it's always been a holy grail <laughs> for me. Yeah. Because I, I had a mate that had one when they first come out. But like I said, you know, when I was a kid, money was tight. Mm. And so it kind of passed me by, you know. By the time I could afford to get something, you know, I, I, I got something else. Mm. And 
I always wanted to get one because of nostalgia, I suppose, but it was only last year that I actually picked one up. <laughs> and <laughs> and the main reason for that is because I, I do want to modify it, you know, with the uh, IPS That's screen great. and yeah. a nice case and all that, you know, which I still haven't done, but <laughs> the Game Boy <laughs> always gets put on the back burner, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was the same with um, cause all the system I picked up. You, you just always wanted one for some reason, and you, you get older one. I think the, yeah. the very first thing I collected when I started collecting retro stuff was the N64 because I always wanted one. Right. I remember the time I got on a car boot, you know, one its own with a controller, nothing else, no game or anything, for a fiver, and I bought it. And Blimey. <laughs> missing, missing, <laughs> missing, 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 yeah, it was 2009, I think this was. Right. And, um, 2000, early 2009. And of course, Mrs. Bear says, well, Why on earth do you buy one of those for? <laughs> oh, no, no one. So because I've, I never had one. So, yeah, look but, how much they are now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I've got three of them. I've got three of them. I've got, I've got two spare just in case the other one breaks. But th- th- yeah. that, that's how it is. But yeah, um, uh, they, they, they do go for silly money. They do. Yeah. Um, well, I'm 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 pleased you've you've experienced the Amiga because that's one of my my favourite systems. Um, yeah. Funny you should mention the Game Boy because that's going to go on your next gaming favourite list, isn't it? Yes. Uh, leads very led very nicely into that. That was good. Yeah, didn't plan yeah. that well, either. No, <laughs> it no. Out well, didn't it? It did indeed because because we're going back to your favourite game list. Uh, yeah. We this is number three, a game which I told you before and I've never even heard of. So I'm going to learn something here. Um, right, so yeah, that is. game Solar Striker on the Game Boy. So, when so, you say Solar Striker, I think it's like some sort of space football game, but it's obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a top down shoot map. So, it, you know, it's, it's a simple game. Uh, in fact, actually, um, uh, when I, I've, I've done a couple of videos playing it, and I mentioned that it's my favourite Game Boy game. And. Uh, Generation Pixel actually did a video taking the Mickey out of that. He, he put <laughs> he put my face on the end of level boss, <laughs> which is really funny. But uh, oh, he, he's, 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 a, he's a card, isn't he? He's a card. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great lad. And yeah, it was so funny because I remember he titled it something like uh, uh, Generation Pixel versus Nerdy Geese, and I thought, oh god, what's going on here? And I clicked on it, and he starts going on about, oh, Nerdy Geezer thinks he's good at this game, does he? And I thought, I, I never said I was good at it. <laughs> you know? And then as it went on, you know, the boss at the end, he's got my face on it. And I thought, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I, did a video with, I did a video with him a couple of weeks ago, and, and he, he just said, just do this. So I just sort of sent him a two-minute video. Yeah. And he, he just sort of interspersed and I say turned my words against me but uh, no he, he, <laughs> he made a really good job of it actually it was a lot of people really enjoyed that and it was great fun doing it and, and I, I'm hoping to have him on here in a, an upcoming episode as well um, oh, which good. Would, be, yeah, would be good to do yeah he's a funny but, yes, guy yeah he is. so, so, so a striker then so um, where did you pick it up from was it was it a game uh, you've heard about or just one you came across or so uh, originally when I played it, it was on a, a friend's Game Boy. Because like I could say, I never owned one as a kid. Um, uh, there was that and Navy Seals. And what was the other one he had? I think it was a Batman the movie, maybe. Mm. So um, they were the ones I'd played on his Game Boy. And, but more so than anything was Solo Striker. So I always enjoyed the game. And then, of course, a few years back, I got uh, a Raspberry Pi, which came fully loaded. And it was on there, so, you know, I enjoyed playing it on there. But, of course, last year when I picked up my Game Boy, the first cartridge I wanted was Solar Striker. So I remember going on eBay trying to get it, and the only way I could get it was I actually had to buy it from France and get it sent here because oh, right, yeah. it was cheaper to do that than buy it off someone over here. So it seems it's quite a pricey game over here if you can find it. Hmm. So... Like I say, it's, it's not a massively elaborate game. I mean, it is a Game Boy game, but it's a shooter that plays well, and it and it's got really good music to it in the, the old school sort of sound effects. You know, mm. very nostalgic. I was so, going to say it's, it's probably something that, that that holds that nostalgic feel as well. Having played it back then, it's it's, it's going to mean a little bit more 
And I, I suppose if you have a system, it, it's, it's uh, I, I, I was the same with the Mega Drive, and people sort of laugh at this because it's such a bloody mediocre game. But um, I picked up last year, I think it was Wrestle War on the Mega Drive. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's not a particularly fantastic game, it's just pretty average. For, for, but I played that game in the arcade. I played that game to death in the arcade. And then yeah. when I bought my Mega Drive from this guy at college in 94, it was in there as well. Yeah. So for me, finding a, a brilliantly clean copy with a case was intact, the manual was, was crisp, no markings on the on the cartridge, to get that for like six quid. That's, that's, yeah. you know, not many Shut people are going to put that down. And, you know, most people say, oh, six quid, I'm paying that for it. It's not worth it. Well, to me, it's worth it because that holds a nostalgia feeling for it. And there's Talmud's Adventure, which we've got recently, even FIFA 95. Okay, it's a FIFA <laughs> game. I don't know what people are going to say. But when I first had that, I played that consistently. Um, and, and that's a game that I wanted to get back because I just have fond memories of it. Do you know the funny thing with the FIFA games? I actually prefer the earlier FIFA games. These new I, I, ones, I, I can't stand them. Yeah, I, I, I like the, the just because of the, the the isometric view of it. Yeah, and the football was, as well. Yeah, it, it was it was really really sort of different way of doing a football game because football games were well, that point had gone from being side on to being top down. So the fact that yeah. you sort of turn it slightly at an angle. It's different, but I was watching because uh, obviously Big Game Al simulated that uh, European Championship game, didn't he? The the Euro final on his PlayStation Five, I'm guessing. I can't remember. He did, he did it on Sunday, and just watching that, I know he's pointing the camera at the telly, but it just looked terrible. The, pl- the way yeah. the players moved around, and I thought, give me an old style FIFA game, and he'd be quite happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, even saying that, I mean, back then. You know, I probably would have picked kickoff mm. over some of them, even. You know, so yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 I will argue to the cows come out that the kickoffs, well, kickoff two probably is, is the best football game on the Amiga of that era. I know a lot of yeah. people will argue that sensible soccer is, and I like sensible soccer. I don't hate sensible soccer. I think it's all right, but I prefer kickoff. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I and and, 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 I, and I would argue that one all the way through. Uh, mm. That's my my sort of game. In fact, I. I'd be happy to sort of sit down and do it and play it. might be a bit more difficult now. We talk about game playing skills. It's not the easiest game in the world to control. No. Uh, because it moves so fast. But at the time, I, I was I was great at it, and I used to enjoy playing it. So, um, Right, so change of pace then for your next game. And we're yeah. sort of coming into the modern generation now. And a game I, I've got to know absolutely nothing about. Well, I know the series, but I know absolutely nothing about this one. So, once again, I am I am sort of listening to your your voice and being educated at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, this one would be Mortal Kombat XL on the PS4. Um, I've always enjoyed the Mortal Kombat games, mm. uh, but for me, I mean, Mortal Kombat 11 is a good game. I do own it, but I always find I go back to Mortal Kombat XL. Um, part of that is probably because of the characters because you do get some additional characters you can play as the Xenomorph um, Predator hmm. uh, Jason and Leatherface so okay, not so yeah. much not so much of a Leatherface fan but the other three you know definitely um, that, so that might be part of the reason why I prefer it but for me Mortal Kombat XL was different to anything that came before it the mechanics of the game had slightly changed. The graphics were obviously really good. Um, you know, Mortal Kombat 11 is really just another version of that, like not much mm. different, just different characters. So I think that's probably why I always go back to XL, but it's a really good game. It's a game I go back to constantly and I, I enjoy playing it. I've streamed I... it a few times on the channel. So Right. Because... I played the first one on the Mega Drive. Again, that came with the one that I, I bought from the guy at college. Some great games in there. I regret getting rid of it now. But, I, I mean, I was, I've always said beat em ups are not my, my choice of game at all. Yeah. But I used to enjoy playing that. I, I, could never, I could never pull the finishing moves off. But I could get reasonably far just by basically couldn't punching and kicking people. Yeah, see, the funny thing is, I mean, with the newer ones, you probably would be happier playing them. Because mm. 
you find that the finishers and that and the special moves are not as difficult or to do on there as, and of course they're more elaborate than the back in the old yeah. Mega Drive days, but they are certainly easier to pull off. Mm. That's it. I, I didn't know that, so that might be worth me investigating that further and just to see if I can perhaps get an interest in that because what puts me off about those games was the Street Fighter 2 especially. And not so much more combat because I get around Street Fighter 2 I found was very unforgiving. If you, if you couldn't do the special moves, then you really had absolutely no chance. Whereas I proved with Mortal Kombat that it, it's quite reasonable to get so, so far in a game with not being able to do the finishing moves. So if it is easier to pull these things off now than it was then, and I sit there and read a manual and go, I'm going to do this and put that, and you know, just spend more time looking at your hands and actually do the game. Well, the, the funny thing is, I mean, I've played people on Mortal Kombat XL and they've pulled moves off purely by accident. <laughs> it's because mm. <laughs> there's, there's so many moves you can do for each character that you could pull off a move by accident, which, of course, you know, if you then if you found it difficult on games in the past where you couldn't get them to work, mm. chances are you're probably going to pull a few off without realising it, you know? So, well, I, I must be honest with you, I don't think I did. <laughs> I, I don't think I, did. I think I ever got lucky pulling anything off. I think I'd probably just drop the joypad in absolute sheer amazement and just sat there staring at the screen for ten minutes and working out what I'd done. I mean, I'm the sort of person who used to play something like WF Warzone on the PlayStation One, and I'd basically sort of like look at some character and say, right, those three moves there. If I can memorise those, that'll be fine. I just used to, you know cook, kick punch and those three three same moves over and over again, and I was fine. Yeah. And yeah. that's not really playing the game properly, is it? You need to sort of do a I bit think, more to it than that. I think one of the things that makes it easier, especially with fighting games on the PS4, is that, you know, back when you had the Mega Drive, you had the little D-pad, which made the moves more difficult to pull off, especially mm. when you were a kid. Um, whereas with the PS4 controllers, if you use the sticks, I mean, you know, it, it is much more comfortable to do. Mm. So, as a result, they're more enjoyable to play. That's what I find, anyway. <laughs> so, well, I've got a, I've got a, a few modern, I say modern, sort of PlayStation Three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty beat 'em ups in my collection, simply because they were just too good, good, good a price to turn down and not pick them up. So, I, I, I may go back and revisit those and heed your words, and then if it all goes horribly wrong, I can just blame you, can't I? So that should be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but well, not actually, to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone blames Eddie. Um, but but in a way, it's probably a good thing in the fact that I probably ignore these games for so long, thinking mm. I'm absolutely terrible at them, and therefore I've not touched them for years. So yes, they probably could be more tailored to you know somebody of my limited games playing ability. Now it might be easy for me to play that game as you said, to go back and play the other games where it's really complicated. Mm, yeah. you, you, you may have started something there. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, I, I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll carry on going with, with the last two of your favourite games because that will segue us no, nicely into your um, sort of last game in history before we yeah. get to you. Because yeah, I, I know what your sixth game choice is going to be and then I know what your next gaming history section is going to be. So that will go quite nicely into that. Um and well, we are on the subject of beat 'em ups at the moment. We talked about Mortal Kombat. It would only be fair to speak about this series next. Yep, and that's Street Fighter Five on the uh, on the PS4 as well, wasn't it? On the PS4, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's an interesting one, this, because when I initially picked it up, I wasn't a fan because I wouldn't say it was broken, but it didn't seem like it was finished. Right. Uh, you felt like you was kind of getting half a game, and it wasn't cheap. So I was a, when I first got it, I wasn't particularly happy with it. But over time, they added more to it. Mm. And going back to what you were saying about fighting games, again, this is you'd enjoy this more than Street Fighter 2 because it, the moves don't seem so difficult to pull off. They, you know, like when you back in the days of Mega Drive, Snares. You know, sometimes you'd be sitting there and you're doing your quarter of a circle and it wouldn't always come off. Whereas mm. I found with this on the PS4, it does. And 
And of course, one of the things they added to it was that you can play um, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3. Of course, it's with the new graphics, not the original graphics. Mm. So how Ryu looks in Street Fighter 5 is how he'd look if you played him in the Street Fighter 2 mode. Okay. So it yeah. is it is an up to date look, but you've got all of that with it. So there's a lot to it. Yeah, it's it's enjoy- quite an enjoyable game. I, I do like going back to it. My, my boys enjoy it too. So mm. yeah. Have you a favourite in the Street Fighter series? I mean, you see, you play Street Fighter Two on the on the snares. Uh, is, is this your favourite Street Fighter game of, of the genre? I, I would I would say so. Um, mm. It's funny because, I mean, I liked Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Alpha 1. I liked Street Fighter 2 and Super Street Fighter 2. But I've found that since playing Street Fighter 5, when I go back to them, I don't enjoy them as much. Mm. And and I think it's because they've taken it so far now. I, I enjoy Street Fighter 5, which is funny because normally I prefer my retro. But when it comes to... Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, I actually do prefer the newer ones. So yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I remember years ago, I picked up a copy of Street Fighter, th- the one on the Dreamcast. Was it Street Fighter Three? Street Fighter Three. Third Strike is it? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. And I found it at a charity shop for a quid, and I was Ooh, like, man. "Wow, yeah, that's good." I got it. Yeah. yeah, I got it home. I opened it up, and it was a copy of Virtual Striker Two in there, wasn't it? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, because because in, in those days I, I simply took oh it's the box for that as face value. Uh, yeah, uh, pick, pick, what I regularly mention is the fact that I bought Tomb Raider three at a car boot years ago, and only when I started editing my PlayStation collection video about six months ago, I opened the Tomb Raider box up to find out there was no disc in there. So it's, it's yeah. been sitting in my collection for ten years, and I've only now realised there's no disc in it. <laughs> 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 just shows how often you play them <laughs> exactly exactly but yeah that that street the street fighter uh third strike was and, and then what the stupid thing was i actually threw it away oh, i thought yeah, well, i've yeah. got that game so i threw the box away as well I was like, mm, yeah and what i don't know why do i did do? that yeah if i if i that well if I, I, I knew i knew it was i thought well, not my my sort of game but i'll grab it anyway good cross a dream cast game for a quid in the charity shop i love that i should have yeah. kept the bloody box I, th- I think yeah. I'm not sure with the manual. I can't remember if the manual was in there, but obviously the inlay was there, the box was there. So I should have kept that and just found a loose copy of the game. I had a lot of to course, learn. He's probably when I first started doing it. But. Of course, now you can get that on the PS4, can't you? Because if you get the uh, 30th anniversary, which I've got, mm. you get that on it. So yes, yeah, yeah. That's one of those, one of those sort of slight errors you make. <laughs> and it's sort of for the best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh dear me. Um, right then, so. On to, on to your last game, your, your last of your favourite choices. Um, and again, we had, we had a quick chat about this one beforehand. I've got the sequel. Yeah, yeah got so... The yeah, Loaded. Loaded? Yeah, so a lot of people might be surprised at this because, I mean, Loaded is one of them games I don't think was really that big. Mm. But it was a game that I enjoyed. It, it was one of the first games I got for the PlayStation. And it, it's a top-down, you know... I don't, I don't know if you call it a dungeon crawler, but, you know, you, you're walking around sh- killing everything, basically. Yeah. It, it reminds me, because I, I was a big fan of Alien Breed on the Amiga. And it yes, was, so was I. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, these games then appeal to you, if you like games like X. It's very similar. But uh, the other thing is, is, again, both my boys really enjoy playing Loaded with me. Mm. And when you consider it as a game that was out way before they was even thought about, that's that's always a good thing. So, uh, yeah, again, another game that's more su- suited to two player. Mm. You you wouldn't I, want to play it on your own. <laughs> I, I, I always get confused. I always think this is a Bitmap Brothers game, and I, I, I'm it does probably gonna, it. yeah. I, well, I, I think of the Chaos Engine when I look at it. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. and and I always seem to get confused between the two. As soon as you mentioned it, I thought, oh, but I'm, I'm trying to remember desperately if it was a Gremlin graphics game, you know. I can't remember, you know. No, I, I, I can't. Be. I can't either. Uh, I, 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 my copy of Reloaded is buried under something, so I can't even get that out and have a look at it. Yeah, um, I can't grab mine because mine's in the no. gaming room and the boys on Fortnite at the moment. So, oh, <laughs> right, well, well, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I, I'm sure if anybody's listening in the comments below, they can just just, just 
let us know that because I'm I'm pretty sure I won't be asleep tonight until looking up after finishes looking up straight away. Who made loaded all those years? Yeah, that's better. I can I can go to sleep tonight and stop worrying yeah. about that. But, I mean, yeah, one, of I, things, yeah. one of the things I enjoyed about that game and, and the boys love it as well is that you know when you shoot people they just splat, don't they? Mm. And you just yeah. got like a, a red patch in the shape of a body, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, of course back then that was probably a major thing, but you know. He, he, I mean, that would have been what you know, sort of ninety-seven, something like that. You, yeah. you don't usually maybe see earlier. that. Probably, maybe a little bit. I, I, was it? A, it wasn't a launch title, was it? It wasn't far off. Um, no, so it's been you know ninety-five, ninety-six, and probably. Yeah, because I, I mean, I got my PlayStation. I think a year after it was released, hmm. and it was one of the first games I picked up. So it couldn't have been far off. Okay, okay. But yeah, it, it also it, it had the sequel as well. I mean. You don't get many games that have that. Well, I say we talked about more combat, XL and Street Fighter Five, but mm. um, they, they game series. You expect those game series to evolve. It's very rarely that you're going to get a game and then you get a sequel to it. I think yeah. that's, that's quite strange. It's, it's... Uh, unfortunately, the sequel kind of put the nail in the coffin because not a lot of people enjoyed the sequel. Hmm. Uh, was that because they... it was wasn't? Was was there a reason for that? Well, one of the things I found when I played it was that it was a lot brighter. And, you know, like one of the things that's appealing about the first Loaded game is it's quite dark and gritty. And whereas when you play Reloaded, it's all bright and colourful. And the characters were different as well. So it just, mm. I don't know, it just wasn't as appealing, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it, it didn't seem to do as well when that one came out. I mean, I did get reloaded, but, you know, like I say, I didn't enjoy it as much. I preferred the first one. It's, a, it's an interesting point because uh, if, if, they, they, if you tinker with something that works, you tinker with something to make it, I don't know, you said brighter, different characters. People go and expect more of the same, and immediately when you pick something up, it's like, oh, doesn't quite feel the same, does it? It's not quite yeah. as, as good as it should be. Yeah. Um, interesting. That, I, I think that, that's a, you know that, that's a, a really good choice. We got um, you know, Earthworm Jim, a classic classic platformer, yeah. Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bubble Bubble, a classic arcade game, and the version you pick probably the best conversion of all. Mm. Uh, top down shooter, which again pretty old old school. That really you've either got the side on uh, shooter, which is all the top down ones. You don't see don't see a lot of those now. No, no. Two great fighting game series. And then you've got that, he said Dungeon Crawler, I think it's probably a very good way to describe it. So you've got yeah. a, a real sort of mixture. Okay, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, maybe sort of the same game, but a real sort of mixture there in your favourite games. I think it's a pretty good choice, that. And of course, with yeah, Mortal Kombat and Street, Street Fighter, you can play through with all the characters a number of times. So, Yeah, I, I think they, you know, if I was stuck on a, a desert islands that you know mm. they would be they'd keep me going for a while <laughs> so, and, 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 until the rescue ship turned up, then you'd be yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we get to your other two game choices, let, let's drop back to the last bit of your game history because we just talked about Reloaded, which is on the PlayStation One, yeah. which leads quite quite nicely into to where we're going next. Yeah. So the next console I got was the PlayStation. Uh, like I said, I got it about a year after it released. Um, now, this one I had a nice little result on. Mm. So, uh, basically, a friend of mine who, who'd had his since launch, uh, he was looking, I'm trying to remember if he was getting a PC or whether he was looking at getting the Xbox when it came out, maybe. I don't know. I, I forget. The old grey matter don't work as well these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so your, I, I, your reactions on the games as well. It doesn't quite work as it used to. No, no. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he was looking to sell it anyway for some reason. And um, so I said to him, I'll have it because, you know, I'd been looking at one. And he brought it around, you know, and I, I went to hand over the money. He said, before you give me the money, just test it out. It does work. I know it works, but just test it out. So I plugged it all in. I put the disc in and turned it on. Nothing. <laughs> and he's like this was working a couple of days ago I was like alright look yeah. let's just switch it off on the wall and give it another go you know mm. turn it on nothing so at this point he's frantic because he's like I think I was going to give him something like 150 for it or something like that that's a fair whack then yeah 
Yeah, and I mean, when they first come out, if I remember right, it was about three hundred pound. I think, wasn't it? Something right, like yeah. that, maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, because if you remember that when uh, they launched the Saturn, um, I think they put up three nine nine when it came out, and and all Sony mm. did came out at the conference. We just came out, put two nine nine on the screen, and and the guy just walked off. Yeah, and yeah, that that was it. So they they yeah, wouldn't be about three hundred quid mark. Yeah, so I think I was paying about one fifty. Um, you know, all boxed, and it had a few games with it, you know, like Ridge Racer Revolution and a few oh, others. Yeah. So, yeah, good games. So, yeah. Uh, so, at this point, he rings his dad up, and he's saying to his dad on the phone, you know, like, can you believe this thing ain't working? You know, I was just about to get 150 for it. And then his dad says to him, well, hang on, you still got the receipt here in the drawer. Has it been a year since you bought it? So, he said, well, I don't know. So, he, he rushes off home. About <laughs> half hour later, he comes back. He's running down the road with this receipt in his hand. He's still in guarantee like this, you know. <laughs> so he, he says to me, he goes, you might do well out of this because if I could get this changed, you're getting a new PlayStation for 150 quid. <laughs> so his, his dad comes down the road. He jumps in the car. He goes down, takes it back to Dixon's. And I'm sitting at home and I'm thinking, you know, an hour's gone, thinking this, this isn't going to happen, is it? Mm. And about an hour and a half later, he comes back and he went, you are now the owner of a brand new PlayStation. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a really good result. I mean, it's funny because, you know, I've, I've had some pretty good results recently, but back then mm. I never had anything as good as that. You know, a brand no. new console for £150, half the price with, with games. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. That's been in the right place at the right time, isn't it? and it, and a bit of luck there. I mean, when I I bought mine brand new, I got mine from Comet. Yeah, yeah, long ago that was, and uh, yeah, I think I paid hundred and hundred and eighty, and it came with Alien Trilogy. Yeah, that I, think was it, I think it, I think it's like one sixty without a game or one eighty with Alien Trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the other thing was was that you make he, he could have. He really could have took the mick at that point and gone, oh, I want more money for it. Yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. You know, he just went, look, you know, just have it for the same price. So, you know. It's on, on the deal, you know. That's that's, that's right, yeah. That's what it that's is, true. you know. Yeah. I mean, if he's still in the warranty, then, God, can you imagine thinking about that as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. back then, you know, Dixon's, <laughs> I mean, you know, well, they're gone now, aren't they? So there's probably people uh-huh. watch or listen to this thinking, "What's Dixon's?" Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, what's what's Comet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, different, different era altogether, that isn't it? But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's that, that's that's where you got them from then. Mm, yeah, you know, many places, game stores. There wasn't game. Don't think game was game around then. Electronic uh, boutique might have been. Um, yeah, I think electronic boutique was boutique. around. Yeah, yeah. And the game came along shortly afterwards, but they they would have been around that long if they were. No, because I, I do remember going into an electronic boutique in Lakeside to buy PlayStation One games at one point. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, I know. I trade. I tried to trade a load of Mega Drive. My, my when I got rid of that Mega Drive, I'm mm. sure that was ninety nine two thousand and they went into a electronic boutique then so they've probably been around a few years but I don't remember many game stores. Well anyway, I don't know. It's uh but you, you you know you didn't have that choice back then. It was Dixon's, Curry's Yeah Comet or the mail order. Yeah yeah <laughs> the yeah, yeah, little catalogues, you know. God, that's another thing anyone listening to yeah, mail yeah, order was yeah. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I I, I, I used to used to buy games on mail or used to sort of, you know, another thing, write a check out. Was yeah, I was about to say that, write a check, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got the magazine, you, you go to the magazine, you write down what you want, you send a check out, and about two weeks later, you get your games. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, this Amazon stuff where it arrives by courier the same day. Yeah. Yeah. God, really well, changed. <laughs> God, yeah, when, when, I, when I order my Mega Drive, order my, uh, not Mega Drive, my Everdrive, Evercade, get it right, the Evercade, I uh, ordered it at 7 o'clock the night before and it arrived at 7 o'clock the following morning. Yeah, so uh, that uh, would have happened. <laughs> no, no you, you got no chance. I had, yeah. five, I had to wait five weeks for Chase HQ to arrive on the Amiga and then they sent me the wrong version. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 oh. they sent me the SD version. 
Oh God! So it sent it back, and then we got <laughs> about two weeks point. later. Yeah, two <laughs> weeks later, we got the right one back, um, and all they'd done was basically put a sticker over the box, put the mega sticker over the box where the ST one was, and shoved the disc in. Oh really? Christ. Yeah, place down in London. Yeah, oh, so they didn't even just send out an Amiga one. They actually stuck a sticker on it. Yeah, you, you, you could see. Cause I, I thought when when, I, when, I, when, it, when I first opened it, it was like, oh, it's the ST version. And then you open the box up. Oh, it's the ST discs. Now, what are you going to do? Apart from mm. sort of burst into tears, we wait so long for this going to turn up. I'm going to stick the ST discs just in the Amiga just to see if it works. Yeah. And that's what I did. And then, obviously, it didn't work because it's the wrong format. Yeah. You, you're just sort of clinging on to hope, oh, I hope this works, <laughs> I hope this works. No, it doesn't. And then when it come back there, they just put an Amiga sticker over the box. Man, you could see, you could see, You could see the <laughs> ST was printed on underneath it. It was like, I don't know. Anyway, um, so from PlayStation 1. Yep. You never uh, moved to? PS2. Ah, yeah, I mean, this one, I, I didn't own it completely on my own. It was, I went halves with my brother. Um, I, you know, when I was going through my gaming history, I was thinking, like, I'm sure I wasn't at home at that point. I'm sure I'd moved out. But then I remember I'd, I'd moved out with a friend and it went horribly wrong. And then I moved back into my mum's for a bit. And so that's probably when I got this with my brother and went arms on it. Mm. But, um, yeah, he, he played it a lot. I kind of, around that point, lost interest a bit in gaming. Um, mainly because at that age, you know, you're doing other stuff, aren't you? You know, I think I was a, out... a lot of people do. I, I would say, I don't know, probably two or three of the, the previous people I've spoken to have had periods outside of gaming. And I, yeah. I've done it. I've done it myself as well. There's probably a period about four or five years where I wasn't really into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it was the PS2 where this happened. I mean, I was out with uh, my friends and all that. And if I remember right, I'm sure it was about the time I was working in. I was doing building work, I think, back then. So of course, you know, building work and drinking in pubs kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Really. Mm. <laughs> so, yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> so I was doing that more than I was gaming, obviously. So. Whereas my brother, he was three years younger, so he got a lot of use out of it. So, yeah, and in the end, I, I think I sold my half of it to him. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really... Uh, it's funny because I play PlayStation 2 on my fat PS3 now quite a bit. I've got quite a few PS2 games. Hmm. But, uh, you know, back then, I didn't play most of these games. That's the funny thing. I, I think with with me, I, I wanted one as well when they came out, and I I, I actually ended up buying um, uh, my other half's brothers off him, running about fifty yeah. quid, and a load of games with it. Uh, and I love the fact that he, 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 so many games, and they're so cheap, and there's some absolute dross on there. There really isn't, and the dross is the really funny stuff. I, I, I quite like buying the rubbish, and I'm very happy <laughs> with that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have the connection with it. Uh, I have more of a connection with the PlayStation 1. I would certainly say I have more of a connection with the PlayStation 3. Mm. And I, I, I like it, but I don't have the affection for it that I do with other systems. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I mean, like with me, I don't have the affection for it. I think it's more because these are games I missed out on. Right. I think that's, I think that's why I get quite a bit of PS2. You know, it's not so much with that. It's not the nostalgia. It's more the what did I miss out on, mm. you know? So, I, um, I, yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, there are, you know, like the Metal, Metal Gear games, the Resident Evil games, which I've picked up, um, which I, I, I do enjoy playing. But, yeah, I, I, I do agree with that. I do agree. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't know what it is, yeah. I, I kind of, you know, most of my gaming is nostalgia, but yeah, with the PS2, it's just slightly different. <laughs> you know, mm. I'm a, I'm a complicated guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, it's funny how, funny how it works out that sometimes. Don't you? you get a certain in interest or an affiliation with it with a certain system, and, mm. and then sometimes, no matter how much you try and, and like it, you just I don't know, just not quite 
you don't feel the connection to it. Having said that, if I've got as many games as I've got, which is quite a lot, uh, I'm not sure where that comes from, really. But but they're, because they're so cheap, it's, it's dead, you know, I used to be to go and buy a bag of PlayStation 2 games or something like CEX, and I can come back with, like, 20 games and spend a tenner. That's yeah. true. And you, could, and you could still probably do that now, because there's an yeah. awful lot of games that are at a 50p, 50p mark. I mean, some of them might not be very good, but... I think that's part of the attraction. Yeah, just, that's true. If it, yeah. yeah. Um. So then, from PS2. Yeah. To um, we we, we had to be, we touched on this earlier. We touched on this earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So the Xbox 360. I mean, there's, there's a couple of things that come into play with that. So somebody I knew had, had picked one up, and at this point, like I said, you know, towards halfway out of PS2, etc. I'd lost interest. I was out with mates. So when the Xbox 360 come out, I wasn't really... I wasn't looking to get back into gaming. Mm. But a friend of mine had got one, and uh, I remember he had Modern Warfare, the first one, so Call of Duty 4. And I remember seeing it on... His, and he had the 360. I remember seeing it on there, and I was, I was like, what's this you're playing? And he's like, oh, I'm playing like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. And I was like, oh, this looks great, you know. Mm. And um, I'd not long been with me missus. And I remember mentioning to her that, you know, oh, that Xbox looks something else. You know, I wouldn't mind getting one of them. Uh, and, you know, I'd spoke to people I knew and they were like, oh, no, you should get the PS3. Oh, and, and at the time, and this is what I was saying to you before, one of the mm. reasons why I, I didn't really look at the PS3 was because there was problems with the uh, internet service. Yeah. And the more reliable one seemed to be the Xbox. So, so that, and, I've, and at the time I was looking to play this online because I had friends at work that all were going to pick one up and we was all going to go online, you know, after work and play Call of Duty. So we all went out and got them. So as a result, it's like, well, if I'm going to go online, uh, one, I want to get what they're getting, and two, I want to get a reliable internet yeah. service. So that that was the thing really that pushed me towards it. But the, the special thing about it was it was one of the first you know big presents that the missus bought me because right. you yeah. know we we'd got together earlier that year. So yeah, was, and I've still got it to this day. It's one of the original ones. It's it's that's still good. going. So that's really good. That is really good. Yeah, because normally by now most people's red ring of death now, isn't it? So that's it. We don't want to, don't want to curse it, do you? No, <laughs> I, I have got a spare one. I've got a, a slim just in case that ever does break down. But yeah, always hand those. So you, can, you can try and get a replacement, you know, backup console just in case if it's cheap enough to pick one up. Pick one up. It's just worth. Yeah, having. yeah, yeah. I've even got quite a few spare controllers for them as well. So yeah. <laughs> I think out of all my systems, that's the one that means the most to me. And it's because of, you know, how I ended up on it. And obviously at the time, um, my youngest uh, was born 2008. So when he, he'd be in his little Moses basket in the front room and I'd be sitting there playing Call of Duty, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so I had a lot of time, if you like, to play games then because, you know, he was asleep a lot of the time and I'm sitting there playing. So... Mm. I did get quite a lot of games for the 360, and I did get a lot of gameplay out of it. So, so yeah, it was a it's a good system for me. Yeah, mm. I, I I like it. I mean, it is it's one of the ones that I wanted to pick up, and I yeah. was very lucky because the uh, uh, Mrs. Bear's mum decided she wanted to get rid of the DVDs, mm. uh, and I, I went through them for. Her. I said, "Well, you're not going to get a lot for this, to be honest with you." And she said, "Well, she says have them." And then get yourself something for your game collection. Yeah. So I mean, sort of worked it all out and cost it all up. There was around about I think fifty quid's worth of trade. So I took them all trade, took them in, and at the time I think the three sixty I got was fifty eight quid. It's only right. going back about three four years. In fact, it's probably where are we? It's on my it's it's, it's on my YouTube channel because I picked one up. So it's got to be sort of twenty eighteen onwards. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not a one that that long, but I've always wanted one, and I, I, it, it come in a box which they didn't think it would do because uh, I bought one of the not the discounted ones, 
I think I right. bought a discounted one, but it actually did come with a box. It's a, oh, a few wow. marks on it, but you'd, you'd expect that. Uh, yeah. To go. Um, and I, I, I love it. I think it's, it's a it's a great system. I've always enjoyed it. And I wanted, I said to you, I wanted one initially to play games on, but we found that it was best for us, for, for what we wanted, for something like that, for what we could do with. It was better to get a PlayStation 3, so that's what we did at the time. And I like the PlayStation 3. I know a lot of people don't. But well, the, I probably still wish I've got is, a 360. I, I do own a PS3 now. In fact, I've got two of them. Mm. I've got the fat one so that I can play PS2 and PS1 on it. But then I bought this, I got the slim from a, a charity shop. Oh, and right. because, because if you play the PS3 games on the fat one, you're more likely to overheat it. Yeah. It, over, it overtaxes it. So I got the slim for that. So I actually own two of them now. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. <laughs> I've done it the well, other way around. <laughs> we, we, we had we had we had the, we had the fat one, um, not the not the backwards compatible one. We had, I think it was the 80, 80 gig version, I think, and it was great. But then once it overheated, that yeah. was that was it. We sent it off to be repaired, and it come back and it worked fine for a few months, and then it broke down again, and then we sent it off. Yeah, and it come back, and then it broke down, and that was it. And and now it just won't start. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's it's possibly going to be a Mrs. Bear repair project at some point in the future. Well, the funny yeah. thing is, I, I technically have got three because I've got one that I bought that wasn't working. Mm. So um, it, you switch it on and it powers off straight away. So I'm guessing that's got an overheating problem. Yeah, I, I think I'll find out. There's, there's two differences, see, because the one I've got is the Cetro One, which is basically a PS3 with a PS2 board in it. Mm. Whereas the one that I picked up that's overheated, that's the one that's got the built-in emulation. Right. So, yeah, there's a slight mm. difference between the two. But the, the one that I've got that works, I mean, I never, I don't want that to pack up because they're about 300 quid now. That, so, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they, they are quite quite expensive, those particular ones. Um, but so I've, I've got I've bought this when that eventually broke down. We did buy a slim, which is the one I use now. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I like PlayStation. But I, I, I like both of them. I think yeah. um, I think the PlayStation has got some really good games for it. But I yeah. think if you wanted it, wanted a pure gaming machine, you'd go for the three hundred and sixty. I, I think the the look of the games looks better on the three hundred and sixty. A lot of people are probably think I'm swearing right now, but <laughs> I, I I thought Call of Duty games, for example, which I played a lot of at the time, I thought they looked better mm. on the three hundred and sixty. I also think they played better because of the controller. But, you That's know, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Other I, people disagree. So <laughs> I've I've never played Call of Duty on the three hundred and sixty. I played it on the, the PlayStation three, but so I can't really. Sort of throwing my hat in on that one, but mm. but then yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one, and and this brings us to wait to where you are now. With yeah, your, your sort of your modern collection, right? So, um, I mean, my most modern console, you know, not not mentioning the Evercade and all that sort of stuff, would be the uh, PS4. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, in between now, I've bought the kids stuff like the Nintendo Wii, which we still have. Uh, Actually, it's not the PS4. I just realised it's the Switch. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure we had a Switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I, I got the PS4, and that was mainly because uh, Star Wars Battlefront was coming out. And like I said earlier, I would massive you Star, Star Wars fan. Yeah. yeah. Al- although if I had have known how bad that game was going to be, I probably wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily... Yeah, we- We've got it, it on has, PlayStation Four, yeah, yeah. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> so it, it, it's it's all right for a bit. I mean, we didn't go online with it. It's it, it's all right for a bit, but after a while, it just gets a bit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, another Star Wars game. If it wasn't for um, Batman Arkham, oh Christ, which one was it now? Arkham Knight, wasn't it? Yeah, Arkham Knight. If it wasn't for that game, I probably would have took it back. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, oh right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Arkham Knight, again, another one like Spider-Man, I got stuck and, uh, you know, when I went back to it, couldn't remember the button, so I've got to start that again, but <laughs> still haven't done that yet. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I, I, I still buy games for the PS4 now. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good system. Hmm. Although, this is my second one. Oh, right. So, uh, was it a technical problem or was it just... 
Well, yes and no. Um, so I, I bought, first of all, I bought myself a PS4. And then I found that the kids were jumping on it more than I was. I couldn't get on the damn thing. Hmm. So for Christmas, we, we got the kids their own one. And uh, then what happened was, I think it was probably about a year after, I hadn't had it long, it packed up. There was power going to it, but nothing on the screen. So I thought, right, well, it's had it. So I picked up a Slim. Now, here's the funny thing. I put it up in a loft in a box. Well, I can't remember exactly why I did it, but I got it out in a loft, and I thought, well, even if I just sell it as, you know, repair, you know, damaged, Mm. and I plugged it in, and it it came to life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It it must have been some sort of software glitch, because when I returned it back to factory settings, it was fine. So... Maybe it was like a dodgy update. It was sent down at the time, and it just bricked it, you know. So I don't mm. know. I, yeah. I, I worry about I worry about doing updates like that because you hear how many, so many horror stories about people's mm. consoles are just completely blank. Yeah, because you know, we, we had to do one the other day because uh, it's been ages since we used my PlayStation before, and we had to do a software update. I thought, oh, God, I don't like this to go wrong because I'm not going to go and buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, yeah. Luckily, yeah. it was all right, but you, 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 your heart sort of stops for a little bit until it's all done and sorted out, and then you know everything's okay, and you know, you breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I mean, I, I was quite lucky, really, because I probably would have, if I hadn't tested it, I probably would have sold it as damaged and probably got, I don't know, forty quid for it. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, I tried it out; it works, and I ended up getting about hundred pound for it. So that was all right. Happy days. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. so, Happy with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and you got the Switch as well? Yeah, so the reason I bought the Switch was because, I'll be honest, I'm not interested in the new Xbox or the uh, PS5. Hmm. I, I'd started to put a little bit of money aside in case I wanted to get them systems. And, you know, there's, there's, there's just nothing there for me. I'm, I'm not interested. So I thought, well, do I hold out and see if they do an HD, you know, like a 4K uh, Switch? Yeah, and I, I even put it out as a video on the channel asking what people thought I should do, and they're all like, "No, just go and get the switch. It's great, you know." So that's what happened. We got one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh, they, they, they are great. I I, I do like it. And, um, yeah, one of, one, of, one of my big regrets is I don't spend enough time with it. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. thing I have found though is that. Games that you can get on the PS4 that are also on the Switch are always dearer on the Switch, mm. well, which is a bit annoying. Case, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. it's Nintendo. Yeah. It's always been the case. You, you try and explain to, to, to me why GameCube games are still ridiculously expensive, given the fact that that system is now knocking on for nearly 20 years old. Yeah. Why, why are the games still commanding such a high price for it? E- even the cheap, e- even the sports games, you're looking at paying you know two, three quid a time for them. Yeah. Whereas on other other systems, even on even on you know the the modern uh, PlayStation Four, you know, new versions of FIFA from like twenty uh, twenty nineteen, you, you can yeah. twenty eighteen, you can pick up for, for for pence. Yeah, but GameCube game, you want to buy a copy of? But I paid the other day uh, FIFA six on the GameCube two quid. Yeah, I, well, I wouldn't usually pay two quid for a GameCube game or a FIFA game, but it was just in. Sorry, a, a game, a FIFA game, but it was in good condition. So I thought, well, I'm not going to leave that behind for two quid. But uh, you you, there's not no cheap games that system, and I think that's the problem with the Switch as well. I look at second-hand games, and they are still very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, do you do you like shoot 'em ups? Uh, I used to when I do. I know the, the reactions of a 18-year-old compared to the reactions <laughs> of a 65-year-old now. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, Geordie Slasher Gaming put me onto a, a game called uh, Simora X on the Switch. You can mm. get that on Amazon for uh, £8, and it's it's a pretty good game, actually. Cheapest game I've actually come across for the Switch. <laughs> so, Well, th- th- that would be something I, I would sort of look at, because I, I, I'm not going to go and buy a game for like 20, 25, 30 quid, which is mm. current generation, and, and not play it. I would yeah. do that for my old stuff, but that's for a completely different reason. Yeah. If I'm going to buy a modern game, I'm going to want to sit down and play it. I'll, yeah. I'll just play. I'll just pay twenty pound for Elite Dangerous uh, second hand on the PlayStation Four. Not for me. 
for, for the other half because she that's the sort of game she enjoys. Yeah. Uh, but I I would never have usually paid that for something else. But uh, if I was yeah. buying that for myself, I wouldn't have paid twenty quid for that game. I'd have been trying to yeah. buy Drive Club for three quid or something like that. <laughs> I've got that anyway, so that, that's, that's beside the point. But that, 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 that's what the sort of game I would look for, so, you know, a cheap, modern generation game. And I know they're out there, but I just don't think they exist on the Switch. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's how it is, I think. So. so the main reason I got the Switch was because we used to have the Wii in the front room for, you know, family gaming. And Mario Kart and Wii Sports would get played a lot. And, you know, it suddenly then occurred to me when I was looking at the current, you know, the new gen of consoles, I thought, you know what, we'd probably get more use out of the Switch. And mm. so that's why, you know, that's why it sprung to mind. So, so it's, yeah, it's in the front room. <laughs> so it, it, it's, yeah. it's a good system. I, I like it. And, uh, and I think they, they got that one spot on. And I think they had to get something spot on after the Wii U as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they went right up with the Wii, and then the Wii U brought them right back down again. And they had to get the Switch right. If the Switch didn't work, I'm not sure yeah. where they would have gone. It, it, yeah, it, I think that would have been it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I, was Pokemon Go before the Switch or after the Switch? I'm just Ooh, trying yeah. to remember. I'm thinking I when before. That craze was. Yeah, because because I think at the time I remember remember how quickly that caught on across the world, and I thought this is I thought this is save Nintendo. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it was after the week. So the Wii U had sort of like failed miserably, and we were waiting for a new console. And I thought all of a sudden this came out. I thought yeah, that they've they've hit the nail on the head again, haven't they? They've gone back to their their roots and made something that people can play and really enjoy. And then yeah. I think the Switch came out after that, and then they're riding that crest now going back up again. So the Could thing for me, I think if they hadn't have done the Wii U, though, you wouldn't have ended up with the Switch, you know? No, the, 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 the Wii U is very much um, the sort of the, the, the prototype for the Switch. It, it's some, yeah. it's, I, I, I'm one of the few people who will actually sit there and defend the Wii U. I like the game tablet. Everybody hates the game tablet. I think it's great. Mm. I think there's some really good games for it. It's. I think it's going to be a system which is going to be incredibly expensive to collect for if it's not already now, which it is. Yeah. The game's yeah. certainly in cheap, and and if you ever see any cheap Wii U games, you pick them up, no questions asked. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. They are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um. And and I I I think you're absolutely right. It it, it it sort of sat between the two. It wasn't quite what people expected. The Switch is probably where it should have gone to. And again, yeah. again, that, that's that's a great console. You can take that anywhere with you. And I keep meaning to take it to work with me, but I keep forgetting to. And <laughs> I love the, I love, it, it sits it, like yours. It sits in our lounge, and it sits there in its charging dock, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah, and it, that's why I really hate looking at it because I think I really should do more with that. But, uh, <laughs> I know. So that that brings us to the end of your gaming history, mate. Yeah. Um, we have two games left to go. Which mm-hmm. uh, sorry, did we. That's what I do try and try to keep these down a couple of hours, so I, I don't want to rush through these, but we just have gone over the two hour period, so we'll, we'll, we'll give them some t- the time they deserve. The two games that I ask you to pick outside your favorite games one is that one game you absolutely hate, which we always finish on, and the other right. game uh, is the game that you've played before, you didn't get on with it, you've played before, you quite enjoyed it, but you didn't get very far with it, or you got stuck on it, or you're in the middle of playing of it and something happened, and you thought, I always go back and play that game. You've touched on a couple that you mentioned earlier. I know you mentioned it briefly earlier. Just yeah. In passing. So that game against the PlayStation 4 game. Yep, it is. And it is. And it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man, which is a game I, again, would like to get myself, but I'm still waiting for it because I'm a cheap ass. I'm still waiting to drop down in price. It's, it's a really good game, actually. I, I really enjoyed playing it. But the problem was I got stuck at this part and I, it didn't matter how many times I tried, I got <laughs> stuck. And it, it got to a point where it was like, if I don't go away from that for a while, I'm going to break a 50 quid controller, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Sometimes you've got to step away from the game I go, you know, before something dangerous happens or yeah. expensive happens. I've got to step away from it. The, the problem was, was uh, I mean, I initially walked away from it. A couple of days later, I went back to it and still couldn't do it. 
And then at that point, I just left it and I didn't go back to it at all. <laughs> Problem I now have is I can't remember any of the buttons or the controls. So if I do go back to it now, I'm going to have to start all over again. So, which, is no, which is no bad thing, really. Cause, cause you, you may find it comes back to you as, you as you sort of go through what you need to do so you can get back to that point you got stuck at then previously. It might even turn out that I've missed something. Mm. And then when I get to that part again, I will be able to get through it. You never know. So, yeah, like you say, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing to go back to it. So, mm. yeah, I mean, I've, I've had that I had that with Batman Arkham Knight, like I said earlier as well. Same difference. <laughs> so yeah. I, I keep repeating history with these. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks a great game. And I... I, I big superhero fan growing up not so much now because i think a lot of the films and the constant interest in putting superheroes onto film has really sort of put me off to be honest with you but i'd still like to play this because i think yeah. i would get a lot of enjoyment and and to be honest with you i did enjoy the the, the spider-man games that came out based around the films yeah. Uh, yeah and i think if i remember correctly i had certainly i had either it was either on the xbox or the game if you can't remember the, the first spider-man game and I've played the second one. I've got the third one on the Wii as well. And I did like those games. The fact that you were able to sort of just swing it around. Yeah. It was like, it was like wow. That's, I can imagine how wonderful that looks in glorious 4K and whatever. It's been streamed in or broke. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Made in. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I haven't played the uh, Miles Morales one. I haven't played that one. So I can't really... Um, say for sure it's the best spider-man game but in my opinion out of the ones i've played mm. definitely the best spider-man game i've ever played because it, it feels just like it should do you know when you're when you're playing it you know it it's almost like you are spider-man if you know mm. what i mean by that you know yes, yes yeah when you when you watch the movies and the cameras following behind spider-man that's exactly what you've got with this and and yeah, the graphics are brilliant. You know, the mechanics, it's all spot on. You know, it's, it's definitely the best Spider-Man game I've ever played, for sure. Yeah. Very good game. The very first one I played was on the 2600. Do you remember that one? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to yeah. sort of uh, spider web your way up the uh, the building yeah. um, and avoid being having your web cut and then get to the, the top and defuse the bomb. Yeah. You sort of I swing remember. onto it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm put ages into that yeah, yeah that the, was, uh... the other one i remember is the mega drive one as well so i had that and ah, that yeah. weren't bad but it was hard mm. yeah i don't think i played apart from that what that that's that one and the modern one i don't think i played any other apart from that god awful dr doom's revenge on the commodore 64 <laughs> just atrocious uh but it, yeah it's it, it even a uh, I don't even class that as a proper Spider-Man game. It's just terrible. <laughs> and that was the first time I played it. I thought, I've been, I've been waiting nearly 30 years to play this game. It's bloody crap. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely I, rubbish. I, I'd never actually come across that originally, but, yeah, I, mm. I remember you mentioning about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an absolute shocker. It really is. Oh, dear. Speaking of absolute shockers, <laughs> we, 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 we come to the, the, the final item on, on, on the agenda for this particular episode. Um, yeah. We always finish on this one because it, it it's the right way to finish. Uh, yeah. uh, um, a nice way to go out. The, for some reason, in, in amongst all these games that you've packed and, and got stuck on the desert island with, there's this game which is always tormenting you, always you've always hated since you've played it, and you know it will be a cold day in hell before you play <laughs> it again. But given the fact you're stuck on the desert island, you may have no choice. Yeah, this is true. Um, and again, I don't think anybody's picked this one before either, which is quite surprising, really, considering what sort of game it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and everyone, every, everyone will know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, it is? E.T. on the Atari 2600. Could it be anything else? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was this bad, game... It's bad to go up. It was bad to go up at some point. <laughs> it, it's famous, isn't it, for being... Mm. It's got to be the worst game of all time, surely. It's got to be, isn't it? I mean... I, I think when you judge the worst games of all time, and this, this, mm. is, this is my opinion, uh, you've got to look at everything across it, how it plays, 
um, is it, you know, why is it so bad? We, 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 I mean, so much spaces and time and column inches have been written about ET over the years. Mm. Um, it is regarded as one of the worst games, but I tend to sometimes think it's regarded as one of the worst games because of what happened to it. You know, they made millions of cartridges which didn't sell. Yeah, the game was made in six weeks, as as we said before <laughs> we started doing this. You, you can't make it, you know. Even back then, it, you, you can't make a game in six weeks and bring it out. And they proved it. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's exactly right. And and it's one of those games that lives lives, you know, infamous game. Is it the worst game of all time? I, I th- th- there are other games uh, out there that, that are far worse. There's that. A bus simulator on the Mega Drive or something, which I think was released in Brazil, which tends to crop up. I don't know if you've seen that one at all. I can't. It's, no, super, I but... it's called Super Bus or something like that. If, if you if you look at like a top twenty worst games ever, it's going to be on that list. Oh really? Um, Charlie's Angels on the PlayStation Two is a terrible game. I, I think that's. I, I played ET when I was a kid, and yeah, I didn't like it then. Mm. But having played Charlie's Angels, I think that's a worse game than ET. So people the, will argue argue that Superman sixty four is the worst game of all time. But how many people have actually played Superman sixty four? Yeah, true. Yeah, not not many. And I sometimes I think because ET's you know not 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 saying I, I you know your decision is wrong or anything like that, mate. Because that that's not the point of this. But sometimes when when people say oh ET is the worst game of all time or Superman sixty four games are worse of all time. That's a lot of modern people saying it. Have people actually played those games? Or they just sort of, sort of say, oh, yeah, it's 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 the worst game ever. I've played ET. I know how bad it is. Mm. But what was your experience with it? So, I mean, the things that made it so bad for me was, and a lot of people are probably going to think I'm going to say, oh, it's because of the way it looks. But it's actually not that. <laughs> the worst part for me was you didn't have a clue what you had to do. Yes. You know, you're wandering around, and you know it's only in recent years where I found out. Oh, you're meant to actually build a phone. Oh, so that's yeah. what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, nobody knew, <laughs> did they? No, yeah, uh, I think I think was it three. I think there was three pieces of the telephone you had to pick up because you made a little telephone icon at the top, and then you right, had to yeah. go somewhere, and then that would call the spaceship down for you to get picked up, and then you could go and try and find the spaceship. Get in a spaceship, and that was it. And that would take you take you off, avoiding being caught by scientists and FBI agents and falling down the endless holes. And and that was the other bit I was going to get to the holes. I mean, yeah. If if anybody's watched my this game sucks episode one, which is on ET, <laughs> you will see that most of that gameplay I am in a hole. <laughs> 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 and, and worst thing is is that. Even when you get out of it, you fall back in the damn thing, did not you? That's yeah, the worst part. That, that it was so infuriating. I mean, I mean, you, you, you sort of levitate out of this hole yeah. that you were in, which I don't remember ET doing that in the film. No. <laughs> uh, and then if you sort of, you had to keep that his neck extended and then move away from the hole. That's or right. The, the wells, I think they were called wells you falling down the mm. well. And as long as you're away from that, it was fine. But if you just sort of came out of the hole and put your finger off the fire button, you'd down automatically again. be on the well and fall back down again. And, of course, yeah. your energy would keep dropping. And you could do it again and fall, as you said, fall down and fall down and fall down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a frustrating experience. Mm. It's, it, it's There's no gameplay to it whatsoever. You've got to, and I think you can only find the telephones by falling down the wells anyway. Yeah, I think they are actually in the holes, if I remember right. Yeah, I think you're right yeah. there. There's a flower down there, which you, if you find the flower, you would sort of go over, press the fire button, and it would restore some of your energy. Mm. Um, and there were little there were little dots around as well, weren't they? Little yes, dots, uh, I yeah. I mean, it's been years since I played it, so I'm just going for I don't remember here. what they're for, but there are dots, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what that was it. That may be energy or something. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I, I can't remember. Again, another thing that wasn't really explained, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it is one of those strange. I, I mean, I think it's probably there may have been worse games than that. I think it's probably the most notorious game of all time. Mm. 
I, I, there's, I don't think there's any question about that at all. There have been other games which have had controversy about them and about the subjects they've they've gone uh, gone round and involved, but this is just just notorious. You make you say ET computer games, people know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Having said that, though, this is a. Uh, it sounds funny. This, although I hate this game, I wouldn't mind owning the cartridge of it. I haven't got a mm. twenty six hundred, but I wouldn't mind owning the cartridge, and it's purely because of the history behind it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree. I, I, I would very much. I, I had that game originally. I mean, we had that's mm. the games that we had, so I, that's where I, my playing experience comes from. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I think just again, we mentioned earlier for nostalgic reasons, I would like a copy of that. Mm. Loose, loose, just loose cartridge do. I don't, don't need the box or anything like that just to have that game again and say yep there yeah. you go I've got it um, I, I I actually think that <laughs> play, we had Raiders of the Lost Ark as well we talk about Atari 2600 games about films and that was a frustrating experience as well because you had <laughs> to use two joysticks with it I don't know if you've ever played Raiders of the Lost Ark or the 2600 I don't think I did on the 2600 no. yeah but but you had to do something about uh, my dad used to play it an awful lot my dad very very played games but not a gamer at all but he would play that and there, there was a bit where you had to sort of like rotate the joystick to cast uh, you, you were casting something to land on an island it was, just, no, and, and it, it was just so complicated to do that um but yeah, that 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 was a pretty shonky old game as well. Another licensed game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. But that would have been before. That probably would have been before ET because Razor Lost Ark, I think, is forty years old this year. That makes me feel really old, by the way. Just just for saying those exact words. I think it's eighty one. It came out. Yeah, I think you might be right. You know, and ET yeah. was when was ET was eighty two. Eighty two or eighty three? Yeah. Yeah, um, but I think the Raiders game came out on the 2600 before the ET one. Yeah. Uh, I remember remember it came in the newly designed Atari 2600 boxes with the sort of silver box and the sort of colours in the middle of it. Um, But yeah, that that was a frustrating experience as well. But ET is probably worse than that. And everybody has got their own opinions on it. It's a very frustrating gaming experience. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely. Uh, as I said, if you've never heard of it, there can't be many people listening to this who hasn't. They've never heard of ET, and there's plenty of information on the internet about it. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you go on Amazon, they've done a whole documentary about it. <laughs> that, that's, that, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've, I think I might have seen that actually. It's called Game uh, Over, isn't it? Yeah, I think I have seen that. And it's actually um, got ET on the front, <laughs> on the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the angry video game nerd did a film about it, didn't he? About finding the, I think a couple of years back, he did one of those, did like a, a feature length film. That might be, maybe it's the same one that they picked up on Amazon. Is this the one where they go to the landfill to dig them up? I think, I think it is, yes. But I, I think, I think that there might be two separate things, possibly. Oh, well, maybe. I, I, I know, I know there was a documentary about it. Cause I've seen a documentary about it, and I've seen also mm. the. The, the nerd video as well, we've gone back a few years, but uh, yeah, there's plenty of information about that. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so, so so there we go. That that is that is that is it. Um, and that has been really good fun. That I've 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 learned quite a bit. There's some games on there I've not known an awful lot about. It's it's been fascinating here gaming history as well because especially we started with with the Tomy LCD stuff we've never covered that before. <laughs> uh, I, I think that, that well that, that was really good because a lot of people again will agree with you on that one and say oh yeah I remember playing I remember seeing those in the catalogs mentioned catalogs before mm. and and that would have been you know other people may have had you know people at school have had gaming systems you may have fallen back on that because I, I I was exactly the same I always looked at those sort of LCD games. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, I haven't got any com- computer on my own. I'm going to play something like Outrun or Afterburner because they were, they were LCD versions of that, and that was what I was looking at. So I can relate that. Obviously, talking about the Mega CD and the Japanese Mega Drive, I mean, that is <laughs> that was that was amazing to understand. Some great games there. I certainly, you know, with Bubble Bobble and uh, Loaded, and certainly myself, I want to play Spider Man. And I played ET before, and I know all that. It's just been fantastic to, to listen to all this mate and it's, it, i hope people have really enjoyed that because there's an awful lot of stuff in there 
I know there's quite a few titles and systems that you've picked that people will be able to relate to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's the uh, it's funny because my my sort of history of gaming is probably a little bit different to some people's. I kind of flip flop backwards and forwards, but but you know, yeah, I, you know, I like all sorts of systems really. So mm. <laughs> you know, and it was nice to come on here and actually like talk about it. You know, like well, you say, well, you know. From a personal thing rather than a channel, so it's it's been really nice. That, that that's it, and, and that's been an absolute pleasure to have you on because that, that's the whole idea of doing this just to stop talking about our channels for five minutes, you know, yeah. or two or two and a half hours in our case. But, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 do what we do because yeah, we, we like to, we enjoy doing what we do, and it's always nice to have the channel do well and and get that support through it. But I also think that there's a personal side to it as well. Why yeah. why you are here, what you've experienced to get to this point and doing what you do. And then that's that's why I enjoy doing this. And it helps me understand you a bit more. And I hope for those people who've watched you over the last sort of 12, 15 months, how long you've been doing it, that all those people who haven't watched you before will now be able to go back and, and sort of um, understand a lot of the stuff you're into and work out, you know, where you've come from and why you're there. And, and I think that adds an awful lot to it. So it's a very personal touch, which is good. And uh, I'm just, yeah. I'm just great. It's just grateful that you've been able to give up the time to come on and do this. Lee. It's been fantastic. Oh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been great. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And uh, I think if we'd had a bit more time, we might've gone a bit further or a bit more detail on some things, but um wasn't wasn't to be but uh we can always do <laughs> something else again at, at some point in the future and uh you know if we if if we do possibly go down the route with the tmb podcast and have guests um occasional guests i'd love to have you on mate so uh oh you know just let me know and i'll be there <laughs> yeah that's been really as i said to, to, a couple of hours ago now um i will put a link in the description below to lee's channel uh nerdy geezer is his name on on youtube i've been calling him lee all the way through because that's his name um but nerdy, Ge <laughs> nerdy geezer is what he goes by on youtube and there is an awful lot of content on there pickups video responses um that that series this game sucks which will be more about et we've just been talking about if you want to go and see um, <laughs> his, his, his opinion on that one that will be on there as well um lee i said absolute pleasure having you on my friend thank you so much indeed for giving up your time to do that and uh um yeah it's just been absolutely great thank you very much indeed Thank you for having me on. I've really enjoyed it. It's been great. No, it's been a pleasure, mate. Um, and to everybody else, thank you very much indeed for listening to this. However you've uh, done so, whether you've watched it uh, on YouTube or picked up during the week. I know a lot of people like to have this on the background while they're at work or they're driving around. It's great that uh, so much good feedback was received last year for this particular uh, series. And there will be more episodes to come. I've got uh, so a few YouTubers lined up to come along and be grilled and talk about their gaming experiences. And that's been brilliant. Um, so on behalf of my, my good friend, Nerdy Geezer, a.k.a. Lee, uh, this is the Retro Bear saying thank you very much indeed for listening, and we will talk to you again very, very soon. But until then, do take care, and bye for now. <laughs>